Coming to you live from deep within an icy radioactive wasteland, we are the survivors of the social justice zombie apocalypse. The few, the brave, the bitchy, once more wading into battle against the zombie hordes with Rent Zerker number 36. Broadly bullshitting with M with Amy Zering. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Amy Zering, oh, if you guys don't know, is uh, one of the people who made the travesty uh, that is otherwise known as the hunting ground about the campus rape epidemic. I, I, I thought I was going to fuck up Zering, but I ended up fucking up Amy. That's amazing. Yeah, well, you know, it's just the way it is. You were so concentrating on Zering that you... You messed up something else. That's just the way it is. Just accept it. And I, I do accept it. All right. And, and, you know, honestly, I do believe that Emma Silkowitz was included in this, as well as another case where there were lots of text messages after the fact uh, where she was, like, um, talking about, you know, the one where she texted him before she went to his dorm room asking if he, him if he had a condom, right? None of that made it into the documentary, but she was one of the featured people in the documentary, I believe. So. Oh, we can, oh, we can discuss all of that when we get oh. to it, eh? Yeah, well, you know, like, honestly, it's, it's the, the entire freaking, uh, they, they seem to be pulling a rolling stone, um, this, these documentarians and, that's just no. The documentarian isn't probably not quite the right word. Propagandist. There you go. There you and go. I don't even think advocacy works. I mean, because usually advocates don't want to make the group or uh, that they're advocating for. They don't want to like create hysteria. This is this is this. And, and when people want to create it, when people go ahead, go forward and make create these sort of false narratives that create hysteria around a particular problem, I don't think they care about the problem. I think they care about the power of being seen to advocate for the problem. Oh, it's virtue signaling. Yeah. Totally, totally virtue or, signaling. And well, virtue profiting, too. Ideological purity as well, I think. You know, um, I can't imagine that this Amy Zeering wouldn't describe herself as a feminist, so. All right, let's get stuck in. Oh, fuck. We got to watch this shit now. Dog, I will... Fucking, oh wait, this is an ad. God damn it. This patch has been an easy one. <laughs> oh my fucking god, so the, it wasn't the dog, it was an ad. Okay, I'm gonna mute okay, you. Okay, no. Ad. Uh, did you, did, were you muted? Are you muted? Yes. Okay, what the hell is going on with this? I gotta, right, I there. gotta, I gotta share. Yeah, you gotta okay. share. And, and you gotta. It's hard for you, Karen. Control. Give me control, oh, there we go. Yes. Okay. Oh, it's the disappear. It's the vanishing mirrors. Yes, the 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 infinite infinitesimal badgers. All right. Okay. Here we go. I already don't like this person. Um. Yeah. No. She. She. Like. Just this. Her nostrils are flaring, and she's like Arnold Rimmer with those nostrils. She could oh. like park a freaking starbug in one of them. You know, I can flare my nostrils pretty big. I could show you. You know, I could turn on my camera. Sure, 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 sure. Let's see. Let's see. Let's, can, let's, can you? I mean, Amy Zeering has certainly set a standard, a high standard, a high bar. I'll see if you can. Okay, get I'm going to stop screen sharing and let's turn on my camera. Let's see. I want to see this. Okay. Why doesn't my camera ever want to turn on when I tell it to? Uh, no, no, get, get, no, we got it. Oh my God, you're right. They're pretty cavernous. They're huge. <laughs> you could get a cigar up those things. I know. Yeah, has your boyfriend never, ever, ever considered the nasal, the nasal option? I could small. I could get a smaller than average penis up there. Yeah. All right. Moving on because everybody wanted to see my nostrils, and now it's over. Um, not yeah. as uh, not as salacious as me pushing my boobs up in that one ad, but you know. I don't know. I'm sure there's there might, people who, who there might be an audience you, for it. Yeah, an audience for people who who, who like the the nasal <laughs> penetration thing. Okay, you could get yourself some of that sinus uh, sinus sinus spray and that little that vaguely phallic. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, no. What, you what do they call the dispensary? You can and just like okay. just squirt like mad. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. I think I think we've made Amy Zeering more attractive by comparison. So let's. There we go. Okay, we're we're moving on. We're gonna do the first twenty seconds. I believe this is an issue. They really don't. No one does, right? Because if you believe it, it could happen to you. I mean, there's a real deep-seated fear of acknowledging that this could happen and all of us are vulnerable. I'm Chloe Newsom, and we are here with Emmy-winning and Academy Award-nominated producer Amy Ziering for this episode. Of okay, but banana, banana. All right. Yeah, I got to be careful, but okay. First idiotic thing. People yeah. can criticize you without being afraid of it happening to them. Um, like, well, like people can be afraid of it happening to them and still not think that you're presenting things as the truth, right? Like people can actually be aware that, okay, yeah, no, everybody's vulnerable, right? Everybody's vulnerable in some way, right? Like both of my cars got broken into this morning or sometime in the wee hours of the morning, right? We got up, found our cars, like, just forget. A cigarette fucking butts all over the floor of my car because they dumped out my freaking butt bucket ashtray to look for, like, half-smoked cigarettes, whoever it was that, that broke into my car, right? We are vulnerable to things, you know, people do to us when we're unaware, when we're careless, when we're whatever. That doesn't mean that I think that there's an epidemic of car thefts. I know I live in a bad neighborhood. Um, I still sleep soundly at night. I don't feel like I'm in horrendous danger. I just don't keep valuables in my car. So, yeah, like, uh, it, I have to admit, um, but it's like, it's, it's pre judging anybody who criticizes you as, as being the criticism as being illegitimate because Notch, they're just doing it because they don't. If they're a woman, they're just doing it because they don't want to feel vulnerable. Yeah. Well, I don't think believing your your hysterical narrative is going to be make me less vulnerable to rape. Uh, I mean, how? Yeah. No, I mean, how? It like it, it's just like it, nobody's saying that. Uh, you know, uh, questioning the one in five or one in four or one in three or whatever bullshit. Or like questioning the like the not necessarily the veracity of the claim because I can absolutely believe that one in three women globally is physically or sexually assaulted in her lifetime if the way you define physical and sexual assault is somebody grabbing your wrist as you're walking by or somebody grabbing your boob in a bar or, you know, like somebody rubbing up against you while you're dancing on a dance floor, right? Or any number of really minor things that happen. Oh my goodness. You know, when you look at how minor some of the, de the definitions that they include in physically or sexually assaulted on a global scale, globally, one in three women, right? I'm shocked that there are two out of every three women who never experience any of that in their lifetime because most of them are like absurdly fucking trivial. Yes, it's pretty trivial. Well, like, let's, uh, let's... Literally, if I were a guy, right? If I were a guy, th this is, this is how the CDC defines sec uh, one segment of sexual violence. It's called non-contact unwanted sexual experiences. This is a form of sexual violence in the CDC's definitions in their National Intimate Partner and Sexual Violence Survey. So if I'm a guy, right, and I go to a bar and some woman flashes her tits at me and I'm disgusted because they're like, I don't know, they're like these gigantic things that she could tuck into her belt, right? Okay. I could say, yeah, that was a non-contact contact sexual experience that I did not want and I would be measured as a victim of sexual violence. This is how absurd it is, right? Some dude grabbing his junk and jiggling it at you, right? Or giving you the eye or hitting on you, offering to buy you a drink when you thought he was creepy, right? Non-contact, unwanted sexual experience. Some guy asking, hey, do you like anal? 
right? Uh, yeah, you just give them the finger and move on. Like, these, these are, like, absolutely fucking trivial things. Banana. Banana. Oddly meets. Critically acclaimed producer Amy Ziering isn't afraid to use her voice to tackle some of society's most troubling issues, like sexual assault. Okay, so, like, you got a woman here. She's pretty hot, actually. With slut written across her belly, but she doesn't want you to treat her like one. She is a slut, but... Well, of course, one of the pressing issues isn't actually honesty in media for Amy Ziering. <laughs> yeah, well... Conspicuously absent is ethics when it comes to advocacy. <laughs> Completely. All right, banana. No. With director Kirby Dick in 2012, she produced The Invisible War, a documentary investigating the alarmingly high rates of rape inside the U.S. military. Isn't banana, this banana, banana. No, no, no. Isn't this the documentary where she interviewed dozens of men who had been sexually assaulted in the military, and she devoted something like two and a half minutes of her documentary to them? Even though 56% of sexual assaults in the military are of men? I'm pretty sure you got to know it's higher. Hmm? You got to know that's higher. That's reported. So that this is this 56% of the of the of the sexual assault reported in the military is men. So it's it's yeah, it's it's enormous. like the the problem for men is enormous. If you look at the numbers, the uh the proportion of women who are assaulted is higher, although uh, I think that they're more likely to report the the non-contact stuff that you were talking about earlier. Yeah. However, yeah. you have to also consider that they're in an environment with eight with that's about eighty percent male, yeah. and for the most part, rapists and sexual abusers choose victims of the opposite gender. So you're going to be looking at four times more potential male abusers than female abusers just by sheer numbers. Yeah. So. The, the the likelihood that they, I mean, it's going to be more likely that, a higher likelihood that women are abused in that situation simply because there are more, the percentage of men, if 5% if of uh, of men are abusive and 5% of women are abusive, yeah. and they and use the opposite sex. Abuse the opposite sex, yes. Then by, by definition, by mathematical probability, you're going to have a proportion, a higher proportion of women abused. However, even accounting for that, that women are doing a disproportionate num amount of the sexual abuse in the military. And you know what was really hidden? All of these statistics that nobody talks about. Military men are more likely to be abused by women than men. And they're very, uh, I'm not sure exact percentages, but about half of them, I believe, are abused by fe female civilians. Yes. If you can believe it, if you can wrap your head around that, a majority, uh, um, not a majority, but a significant minority of, uh, of, of male military, men in the military are being abused by female civilians. <laughs> well, I mean, well, you look at, you look at the whole, uh, the military, I, I'm, I'm sure that there is a proportion of men who are attracted to the military because they're inherently violent. And I think that statistics tend to bear this out on not just on sexual assault in the military, but on other acts of violence and things like that. But um, if you look at the other segment of men, which is by far the bigger segment of men who are attracted to the military, they are attracted to the military for noble reasons. I mean, some guys are going to go into the military because they just like hurting people, right? Other guys are going to go into the military because they want to protect their country. They want to protect their families. They want to protect their principles, they want to protect freedom, they want they want to protect all of these things that are good and pure in the world, at least as they believe them to be good and pure, right? And those men um, are probably more likely to be the ones who are like, oh yeah, you never hit a woman. You know, you never defend yourself against, against a woman because you could hurt her and all of this other shit, right? And like my sister's in the military, um, or she was, and she was in administration of medical services and as uh, as a doctor, like very, very, very high up in the military. And um, she said that every time they do a survey on uh, sexual assault or domestic violence, um, like intimate partner sexual assault, intimate partner physical violence, they find that women are the majority of the perpetrators. 
whether the woman is a soldier or not, whether she's a soldier with a civilian husband or a military husband, or whether she's a soldier or whether she's a civilian with a military husband, women tend to be the instigators of all of this, right? Of, of the majority of this intimate partner violence. And, uh, and, you know, she said, you have to be careful because, you know, often these conflicts amount to like, she threw a Kleenex box at him and then he, he like poked her in the shoulder or something like that and told her to get out of his face, right? And I'm like, yeah, but you know, it's not like women are throwing Kleenex boxes and men are throwing fucking chainsaws. You know, like uh, trivial incidents are, they tend to stay trivial and, and you know, escalating incidents tend to escalate on both sides. She said, oh yeah, yeah, that's, that's simply the way it is. But it, it's essentially, I think that a lot of these um, men who go into the military um, they are trained to be extremely disciplined in extremely stressful circumstances, um, to not cross lines that are not meant to be crossed, no matter how scared or stressed out or upset or angry they are, right? They are trained to not, like, they go through training to not watch their friend die and then just open up with their machine gun and, and all kinds of bullshit like that, right? Like, some won't be able to you know, uh, to maintain their training. But I mean, like you, you look at the dichotomy, the spectrum of people who are attracted to the military and yeah, there's probably a higher proportion of men than in the general population who, uh, engage in violence, but there is the, the other majority of these men are probably the ones who are very, very sort of white nighty and won't, you know, like they want to protect the helpless, they're chivalric, they, they, you know, they're, they're all of those things, right? So, I mean, it's, it's, it's just this, every time they have something like this, it just feels like a slander on every single one of those men. Well, now the other thing is that when, when you have this perception, this public perception of power, um, that actually can be very dangerous for men uh -huh. because they don't have any recourse should they be exploited. And I think that this is what these women are preying upon. And then there's the other thing that you know you're you're trying to trying to let off steam after after training or are being deployed, and you probably are not in <laughs> not necessarily as alert <laughs> as you could be, yeah. um, drunk or whatever. And, uh, and, and there are women who take advantage of that. Yeah. And, you know, it's like, in my, in my opinion, soldiers are some of the most vulnerable people on the planet from what oh, I've seen. Of course they are. Like they're, they're, they've, anybody who thinks that soldiers are unfeeling, soldiers are uncaring, soldiers are this, that, and the other, and they're horrible people and, and whatever. I, I would, and Gavin McGinnis, if you're listening, I would suggest you read this poem because you said something about millennials or baby boomers. Why baby boomers are like the worst generation ever, right? Because they were the first ones to denigrate veterans. Yeah, no, they weren't. Go read some fucking Rudyard, Rudyard Kipling, right? Go read the poem Tommy Atkins and see how veterans were treated 100, 150 years ago, right? They were treated as, oh, you're my hero when they're needed. And yeah, get the fuck out. We got no, uh, we don't serve your kind in here, right? During peacetime. That's how veterans have always been treated and that's probably why they're so vulnerable. We, we essentially take, it, it reminds me of that episode of Star Trek, The Next Generation. It was one of the first ones with the sort of super soldier who comes and he takes over the, she escapes from the penal colony. And they didn't realize, you know, the, the crew didn't realize he was escaping from a penal colony but he was a genetically and socially and, and psychologically engineered super soldier. And then when the war was over, right, oh, he's too dangerous to allow out in public, so we're just going to put him in prison for the rest of his life, right? Like, how do we use and discard these men, right? And why on earth would women want any fucking part of this? Well, there's one individual in chat who said that he doesn't want uh, Lunchbox Killa 
One reason I don't want women in the military is them getting raped and beaten by the opposing forces. That scares me. Well, you know, I don't want men in the military for the same reason. Well, <laughs> but you look, you look at it. No, 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 no. He's right. He's right. Because, you know, and that was one thing that G.I. Jane, that movie, got right, was that it's the, it is the way men respond, you know, the way they will all spill their guts if their female CO is going to be raped and tortured, right? The, the way the American public would respond if, you know, if two of their soldiers were captured, had their breasts cut off and shoved, one shoved up their ass and the other shoved in their mouth and then dumped on the side of the road, right? And, you know, and then you get closer and you realize she was, like, raped with a machete, right? Like, literally, these two men had their genitals cut off and shoved in their mouth and then were tortured to death, right? Like, is the American, is anybody, including fellow soldiers, willing to keep their mouths shut, right, and protect the mission, knowing that they're sending a female colleague to that, to that kind of death? And I don't know. Well, but the thing is that women still have a protection when, even in war because they're much more high valuable hostages. So if, if a woman is taken hostage, a female soldier is taken hostage, um, I don't think she's gonna be castrated. And if she's raped, it's gonna be with the penis and not with a, a broken bottle like they will with the male soldier. Male soldier has a higher probability of being brutally raped and killed and tortured. Um, and, the, and the female soldiers, I mean, even in these cultures, they still have a protective instinct towards women. So yeah, maybe they'll rape her, but they'll do it with um, a penis, which is not going to do a hell of a lot of damage. Let's face it, folks. So she still has the protection of being female, whereas the men are probably, like you said, they're going to get their genitals shorn off and then shoved down their throats. But the men are knowing. The men, the men know what they would be in for if they were captured, right? And they're imagining all of that. Like, this is, this is the same fucking argument that the true puka ages and ages ago and I don't even know if he's still on fucking YouTube, but he made these arguments that, you know, all of the men in my family, they all fought in wars. They were all deployed. They were all soldiers who went out and, you know, Second World War, Korean War, Vietnam War, whatever, right? They were all soldiers. And they all agreed that it was worse for the women at home than it was for them. Well, yeah, because they're imagining how they themselves would feel if they were stuck at home thinking my wife is in Vietnam enduring all of these atrocities, they're not thinking, oh, well, she'll get a break because she's a woman. They're thinking, oh, my God, they're going to be doing all of these same fucking things to her that they would be doing to me, right? It just, there, un unless you can convince men that... I'm so, okay, okay, there's somebody in the chat. Like there's somebody like in the chat. Saint Attila just said, if you go raped, it's not going to feel better if someone says, well, you're not a man, so at least you have your genitals. Actually, yes, it would. Uh, yeah. I can honestly say that I if I were raped and my genitals were intact, I would feel better than a man who had been castrated. <laughs> I, don't, I would actually say. I wouldn't be I, there saying, oh, my God, guys, I, I've got it worse. I don't even fucking think. I don't even fucking think that's a question because you know what? As a woman, right? As a woman, you and I, right? We have no idea what it's like to have our genitals on the outside of our bodies capable of being removed just with, with the swipe of a knife, right? Just, just like a knife, whew, gone. Like less than 10 seconds, they're gone forever, right? No more fucking getting turned on, no more freaking getting erections, no more sex, no more hope of children, no more nothing. Like, you have to do some serious fucking damage. You have to do some enough damage to, like, kill a person, right, in order to completely eviscerate an, a woman's entire reproductive and sexual capacity, right? Like, th this is... It doesn't even compare. And, and everything that we have is inside our, inside our body. It's protected by our body. It's not just hanging out there for any fucking lunatic to lop off with a pair of scissors, right? I'm sorry. You can't even fucking compare it. 
And I'm let me sorry. let me put it this way: if I were a female soldier, I'd rather be raped than watch one of my 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 fellow male soldiers ha be castrated. Yeah, to be quite frank, because rape and I would, is temporary and castration is fucking permanent. Yes, it's permanent, and I know actually from female soldiers having, or at least one talking about having been a p p p uh, POW, a prisoner of war. She said, and this is from her experience. She said that. Being raped just because she was a prisoner, it was just another thing that was done against her will. So she ended up prioritizing what she was concerned about. The, the biggest thing she was concerned about is not, not being able to do anything about the things that were being done to the other soldiers that she was a prisoner with. Ooh. So rape actually went down the list. Things that she was more concerned about, not being able to help her fellow soldiers, not things that increased the length of time she would be imprisoned, but rape was just, like she said, it just became another thing that she did against her will. Because everything was against her will. Eating, moving, going to the bathroom. When she was imprisoned, everything was done against her will. Yeah. So it was just another thing that was done against her will. So yeah, yeah, I personally would rather be raped. If I was a soldier, I would rather be raped than see a fellow soldier be castrated. Because the other thing is that not only is it a permanent disfigurement, it's also... Most it's also quite probably deadly. Well, it, um, even if it's not deadly, it's not even just a permanent disfigurement. It's a permanent disability. It's a permanent emasculation. It's it's like you can you can take away my autonomy for thirty minutes or thirty hours, right? And and take away like my life and my future and and my hope for humanity and my you know my faith in human, human human beings as, as you know, basically good and all of those things, you can take that away for a while, right? By raping me, right? But you can't, like when you, when you take a man's fucking genitals, like I can't, I can't even imagine, like when every once in a while I would read some freaking horrible Dean Koontz novel or something like that, right? Where essentially some like psychotic grandmother who, you know, adopted her grandson and was raising him as her own and threatened to cut his penis off and shit like that. And I, I'm like, this, this is like an eight-year-old child. Can you imagine an eight-year-old fucking child? I'm going to cut that off, right? Like, I, I don't understand the casualness that even men seem to, to, to view this. Like, there were men making jokes about Lorena Bobbitt. There were men making jokes about Catherine Q. Becker, right? And I'm like, can't you imagine yourself in that position? Can't you imagine how it would feel to wake up in a fucking hospital? And, like, your sex life, your sexuality, your identity as a man, the source of the hormones that maintain your masculinity, all of that gone. Just fucking gone. In a oh, second. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Well, I okay. Let me let me put it succinctly. I would rather be raped than watch my husband have her his his penis cut off. Like, fuck! I can't. I don't even want to. You know what? Let's move on. I don't even want to talk about this anymore. Yeah. No. I I just I think I think that we trivialize that in so many ways, and it's just ugh. okay. Moving on. The film went on to win both an Oscar and the Independent Spirit Award for Best Documentary. It also caught the attention of Congress and the Secretary of Defense, Leon Panetta, reforming the way sexual assault is prosecuted within the military. After revolutionizing the discussion surrounding military rape... You mean fucking degrading it? Yeah, like, because you focused it all around women, didn't you? Yes, you focused it all around women. Because like, that's really the that point. Two and a half minutes. The two and a half minutes where you... you 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 played like one clip of one male victim or something like that and reduced the rest to like, you know, a voiceover. And uh yeah. No, I, I remember reading the uh the there were men who were interviewed for this documentary and uh reading their sort of uh, open letters to the producers going like why why did you why would you even talk to us if you weren't gonna include us in the movie? Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, it's it's not easy for us to talk about what happened, right, to begin with. What and then, an unbelievable cunt. You, you asked us. 
to talk about it. You, you, you led us to believe that, you know, our stories would be told, and that was why we talked about it. That was why we got over our reluctance to talk about it was because our stories would be told, and then you didn't fucking tell our stories. Thanks, bitch. What a fucking cunt. Yeah, no. Um, and, oh. and the thing is that she's what is what the hell is she advocating for? She's not actually advocating for victims at all. She's advocating, she's pimping victims. And yeah. only those victims that are most attractive. <laughs> most oh, attractive to the narrative. Look at this one. She's very cute. Isn't she? Oh, banana. Amy Ziering decided to take on the sexual assault epidemic on college campuses. Again in partnership with Kirby Dick, their 2015 film, The Hunting Ground, premiered at the Sundance Film Festival, earned Ziering the Stanley Kramer Award from the Producers Guild of America, and was shortlisted for an Oscar nomination. What the fuck is wrong with the world? Well, you know, I'm sure it was a very skillful, skillfully made documentary that really played on people's emotions and and hit all the right emotional buttons and there you go that that's that's you know if she did if she did a she did a documentary called the cologne effect or some shit i bet all of the all of the liberals will be will just be hissing oh yeah like that and yet if if she does it towards groups of men on college campuses it is okay but if you did it towards, you know, a Muslim men who migrated into Germany, I don't, I don't, Jesus fucking Christ. What a bunch of hypocrites. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm just like the hunting ground, you know, there was that uh, Washington Examiner article by Ash Scow, right, um, that I posted the picture of in the ad for this, Grand Zerker. Um, like, so many of the examples that they use, and they only ever interview the alleged victim, right? Um, they don't. They don't look into. Um, they don't invest. They're like Sabrina Rubinardly. They they just take the victims or the alleged victims' story at face value, and and you know film her, you know prettily crying, and you know crying in that kind of really sort of attractive way that that victim pimps like to to do, and. Um, and and that's the extent of of their investigation into it. And like, uh, yeah, very very very. Ugh. Anyhow, moving on. Banana. The hunting ground has spawned heated debates across the country with multiple screenings at colleges and universities. But just as society tries to silence and discredit rape victims, the hunting ground has. What? Okay, stop. Mm -hmm. Silence and discredit rape victims. Oh, yeah, no. And so essentially this woman who made this documentary is, it, it, she's being silenced and discredited just like rape victims are. Right? Even though rape victims get to carry around a mattress all over fucking campus and earn credit for it, and uh, despite the fact that they've been put under a gag order, um, yeah, that's, that's how it, and it is, critics call it an, inaccurate and misleading, yeah, it is inaccurate and misleading, so, there you go, all right, banana, banana, university administrations, not willing to back down, Amy continues to stand behind her film's message to hold institutions fostering rape culture through willful negligence accountable. What the f What a profiteer. Oh yeah, no, it's it's Every time I hear the word rape culture now, I just want to stick my fingers down my throat. I yeah, this uh, rape culture, rape culture we don't live in a rape culture. But the funny thing is that if we don't fight this, if we don't fight back and, and not allow these people to, to... Okay, let me ask you something. If you're listening to me, do you condone rape? I mean, this is what they're saying about every person in our society, that we see someone who's raped and we just don't give a shit. Well, I'm not talking about men. Of course we don't give a shit about men. I'm talking about women. Of course we give a shit when women are raped. 
We occasionally question if they were raped, but if we believe they were raped, we definitely give a shit about it. So what she's saying is uh, rape culture is any situation where women are not automatically believed as victims. You know what? You know what? I'm, I'm actually starting to not give a shit about rape victims, about actual female rape victims who are raped by men. I'm starting to not give a shit. I'm like, I'm, I have fewer fucks to give now than I did five years ago. I, I, well, really, do. I really do. I, I am really at that point, right? Where I'm just like, you know what? Fucking get over it. Right. You know, Sh sh bad shit happens in the world fucking get over it um lots of people oh total biscuit has fucking cancer you know if he doesn't get over it he's dead and then his family will have to get over it okay you know people have shitty things happen to them all the time what makes rape so special fucking get over it right i i am so sick of talking about this and you know like I am fine with talking about men who are raped because nobody else does nobody else fucking talks about men who are raped nobody else fucking and nobody else fucking talks about how when men are raped by women they can be punished for the next 18 years right with having to pay their rapist right like there is no legal recourse for these these people right? For these men raped by women. There is no legal fucking recourse, no redress, nothing. She's not going to spend a night in jail. She's literally going not going to spend a night in jail, unlike what the lies that the fucking Enliven Project came out with. Oh, only 3% of rapists ever spend a night in jail. Yeah, that's fucking bullshit. That's absolute 100% fucking bullshit. Okay, but most men who are raped, who could prove that they were... One guy at fucking... Amherst was raped and was kicked out of school as a rapist because his rapist made a rape complaint before he did. Right? So, like, I'm okay with that, right? That is just getting the law to recognize victims that it has ignored, right? But, you know, the law already fucking recognizes women who were raped by men it has recognized them for millennia okay and you know what i just want you ladies to get over it you got dicked when you didn't want to right guys get over it they don't have a choice but to get over it like how how is this worth throwing your entire future away and just stagnating in a swamp of victimhood, a swamp of learned perpetual helplessness. H how does that help you? Fuck. Well, yeah, it doesn't. And also I can see somebody getting sick because of the use of female rape victims to push this, well, basically pimping them. And yeah, yeah. yeah, to sell hatred of males. Yeah, to sell hatred of males this is essentially what they're. This is what is this shit on? Okay, banana. Let's move on. Okay, sorry. I I may or may not agree with everything I said fifteen minutes from now, but at the moment I agree with it. So, Amy, first of all, congratulations on recently being shortlisted for an Academy Award. Thank you. That said, there has... Okay, that's it. Burn the fucking Academy. Okay, Hollywood. Amy, you... Amy, 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 first thing, let me insert my tongue in your ass and, like, just <laughs> little circles. Do you prefer clockwise or counterclockwise? <laughs> okay. Hollywood, you guys are... Can you not slide off into the ocean soon? Just, just, you, you, or go get beam back up into your reptilian motherships, because you're not human. All of you, everyone in Hollywood. You know, I think I think we should promote like um, a, a new a new thing, a new hashtag, Oscar so male. And and it shouldn't be like criticizing the Oscars for being like predominantly male nominees. 
it should be like praising them and demanding that it be all male. You know, like, cause, like, obviously, the you know, like the the Academy Awards. It's it's not about it's not about merit. It's not about performance. It's not about you know doing a good job. It's not about it, it's just. It's just about politics. I'm going to kill my dog. I'm literally going to kill my dog right now. Okay, so it's like, well, it is about politics. It's like virtue signaling and, and, and gang colors and posturing and bullshit. That's all it is. Yeah. It's people posturing over their quasi-morality mm. and actually spending less than conservatives on actual charities. Fucking, fucking Hollywoodians. Ugh. Yeah. All right, moving on backlash by universities in response to your film, how would you respond to that? It is kind of sad and disheartening to see that a few universities who are criticized in the film Look at her are calling you out for being a liar. Look at her nodding. She's nodding, she's nodding. But if you hear, look, I want to back it up like just a few seconds. Okay, now look at her face. Look, look at her, okay? Just look at her and tell me what you see. To that, it is kind of sad and disheartening to see that a few universities who are criticized in the film have been attacking. Like, I, I would I feel uncomfortable to, to be like sitting across from her with her staring at me. Yeah, she just she, she a little bit of a she looked a little doped up actually. But you know, this is if you want me screaming in the chat, just talk, deal with their arguments, not the fact that. So many of these people look like they're strung out on drugs before they go on tape. I know, it's just like the weirdest thing. Like, she literally looks like she's half crazy. Like, she looks like she's uh, manic depressive, but in a, in a manic state, you know? Okay. Okay. Yeah. And what we would encourage them to do is instead of attacking the messenger to really focus on the message. I mean, this is an issue that's empirically... They have been attacking the message, you dumb person. Yeah, yeah. You go on. I'm going to let my fucking dog out. Oh. I don't really have much to say. It's like... I, I, ironic that he she said, don't attack the messenger as we were attacking these people for potentially being strung out. I wouldn't be surprised, though. Like, I'd imagine... I mean, that's not uncommon among people who are expected to go out on stage and perform in front of others that they self-medicate with drugs. Okay. Oh. Watching. As soon as she gets out there, she barks, right? It's just fucking... Okay. I'm done yes. complaining about my dog for now. Banana. Yes, we please do. It's a problem. It's 92 to 98% of the time when someone reports a rape, they're telling the truth. That is such a fucking crock of shit. Ninety-two to ninety of the time, okay. That means two to eight percent of the time, we can absolutely one hundred percent verify that they are not telling the truth. That they are. Yeah, not. yeah. No, let's 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 go forward and see exactly what they're saying in this. And that's percentage of sexual assault. Oh no 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 no. You deceptive, you deceptive reptoids. The 8% is absolutely confirmed to be false. Well, no, the 8% but you're, you're being just, 8% is the lower bound. It's the bare minimum. It's the, it's not, it's not, it's the percentage. Okay, so 6% of sexual assault claims are found to be true. Because that's the number that end in conviction, Right. Beyond a reasonable doubt, that guy is guilty. The sexual assault actually happened. Six percent, only six percent of sexual assault claims are true. Therefore, 94 percent are false by fiat, by my freaking fiat, because, hey, that's how this works, right? If you can only prove that six percent are true, that means all of the rest of those fucking women were lying. Exactly. Like, it, obviously, 100% of sexual assault claims are false. It's just that we can only prove that 8% of them are, are false by definite, like a, by a, a standard of the court, which is preponderance of the evidence or beyond a shadow of a doubt. Yeah. No, but the rest are obviously also false. Of that 6% that are found to be true, right? Um, 
a, a very, very non-trivial number of them turn out to be false. Once well, you but, but here's, DNA okay, test here's the thing. Available. The real spectrum is between the 8% that are found beyond a shadow of a doubt to be false and the X percent, I think, is like uh, about about the same or maybe a little higher, like 16% that are... Sorry? No, it's about 6-ish percent of reports um, that are reported to the police are ending the conviction. Okay, so we got 8% that are provably false and 6% that are provably true, even though... A percentage all, of those will all also be rest, found. All of the rest in the middle, according to this woman, they just go into the big bucket of rapes that actually happened. Yeah, instead of just the gray area of we don't know. We can't tell. Yeah. No, those are all just rapes that actually happened. Well, you know what? I, two, than, can play. Than, two can play at that game. Two yeah, can play at that game. Rather than saying, rather than saying, of the cases that we can say for sure about, it's about 50-50, true and false which would be more accurate of the cases that we can be absolutely sure of the eight percent that are false and the six percent that we know are true right it's about equal yeah it's about equal so the cases which you have enough evidence to actually make a decision eh, it's a coin toss yeah whether or not the rape actually happened or it was a lie, or a misrepresentation, or she got confused and fingered the wrong person who was raping her. Okay? No. So, th that's, okay, that's fine. We, we can go with that. Or she reported what actually happened, but it doesn't turn out to be that that was against the law. Yeah. Right? She reported she, what actually. She, she's like, oh, he led me to, he was wearing a nice suit, and then I fucked him, and then I realized he was driving a rental car, and he works in a warehouse. He raped me. Yeah, no, that's not rape. I'm just, I'm just playing whack-a-mole with a bunch of man academy spammers in the chat. Oh, God. Is Don't worry about it. Let's not get into talking about it. I'm just yeah, saying no. that I'm playing the whack-a-mole. He every once in a while, like sometimes he'll leave me alone for like a whole month and then he'll come on Reddit and he'll like start posting comments to, you know, responses to me and, and sending me messages and stuff and, you know, calling me a, oh, what did he say? Dear piece of shit coward was the private message that landed in my inbox this morning. Dear piece of shit coward was the subject line. Um, but yeah, yeah, Manhood Academy, just, just go away. I... You know, until you until I see five hundred dollars in my PayPal account with your name on it, I'm not going on your channel. All okay. right, all right, banana. A crime in our society, and yet this is the only crime that, when people come forward and report, they themselves are looked askance or questioned or. Well, you know why? Because eight percent is four times higher than the false report rate for any other crime, any other serious crime. 6% is three times higher than the false report rate for any other serious crime, right? 7% is 3.5 times higher than the false report rate for any other serious crime, right? It's the most amazing thing. When you have a crime that's very, very difficult to prove whether it happened or not, right? Either way, it's very difficult to prove. And that crime can be used to make life difficult for someone you're mad at. Sometimes you find that there's a small percentage of women out there, right? And men would do this too, I think, if they were actually able to do it. But even when they have been raped, they get laughed out of the police station. So why would they be making false accusations against women when it doesn't get them anywhere, right? When you have a specific crime that can be used as an alibi, as an attention-seeking device, as an excuse for why you're doing poorly in school, as a revenge tactic, right? And it's only, you know, and, and it's so difficult to prove that it happened and also really difficult to prove that it didn't happen, right? There's no habeas corpus there. Um, yeah, I, I, I think that that's going to be abused by a 
small number of women. And all you need is for, literally all you need is for two or three percent of women to engage in this behavior. And it, which is smaller than what you claim is the percentage of men who engage in rape, right? You just need a smaller percentage of women to be willing to engage in this behavior. And you know what? All of a sudden, you've got a false rape accusation rate of significant proportions, right? Three or two or four times higher than the false report rate for any other crime. Why wouldn't police be extra careful with rape accusations, given that? All right, are we moving on? Uh oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, oh. 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 Sorry, I'll, I'll, I'll get you. No, no, I, I'm, I'm here. Oh. Okay, hopefully that'll work. I've muted you, and I'm going to unmute you, and you shouldn't have to do anything. It's just a little bit of lag on Google's part, so I have to talk, just, talk a second. I'm just looking for my... What the hell? What the, what heck the heck are you doing here? No, I'm lost. How am I still on... All right, all right. All right. I'm just I'm just closing this and I'm quitting this because it keeps bouncing into my field of view. It's really fucking annoying and I don't have time to look at which conversation somebody put something downloadable in. All right, moving on. Uh, vilified and it really is awful. I mean, it's awful. It's a chilling effect on all of us. Do you think that the potential negative reactions seen um, by universities are ingrained in our culture and are part of silencing rape? Well, it's a great question because on honestly, what we're seeing now with this controversy around our film is what the I just I have to I have to say again, the interviewer seems like she's strung out film itself talks about it talks about the ways in which institutions you know sort of aggressively push back and run PR campaigns to defend their reputation as at the expense of victims and so it's a little overdetermined or even ironic that what we're seeing now is them taking a page out of that similar playbook to attack our film the or maybe or maybe they actually have a leg to stand on they actually have an argument you know like I, I just Mm. Like, yeah, no, how, it's really how frustrating. Different, how different is it when a woman falsely accuses a man of sexual assault or when a movie accuses all men and all of society of sexual assault? Do, do you think maybe the response to those two things might be similar? Well, of course, because they defend themselves, that means they're guilty. Oh, of course, of course. You know, it's it's like that. That would that's exactly what a guilty person would say. Is that yeah, I didn't do it. Um, and yeah, no, it's it's essentially like uh, we treat. Uh, she's she's essentially saying a university that says we treat all uh, accusations of sexual assault very seriously. Um, she's saying that that's just uh, that's just her. Uh, that that's just the institution saying, you know, uh, we don't want to look bad. We're just going to say this slip service, and we're going to try and 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 you know, and when they say please don't smear us, then they're actually attacking her, right? Yes, banana. Yes. The majority of universities have accepted the film. It's shown on more than a thousand campuses. It's been a real catalyst for change on these campuses and also state legislatures and also in Congress. So it's a net positive. What we all need to be worried about is this epidemic and are these statistics in which this disproportionate number of women are being assaulted while in school. Hmm. The statistics with the 18% response rate. Are those the statistics you're talking about? The ones where there's like a 
ninefold disagreement between the statistics and reality, right? The the women who claim they were forcibly raped, right? In in the latest big survey of 27 campuses, right? With the 18% response rate. The women who claim that they were forcibly raped, not raped while drunk, not, you know, uh, not I froze up and had sex, but forcibly held down and forced to have sex. Forcibly raped and reported it to their schools, right? And if you take that number and you project it against the entire female university population in the U.S. and compare it against the Clary Act numbers of reported sexual assaults of all kinds, sexual misconduct of all kinds, there's a ninefold difference. There should be nine times as many sexual uh, assaults reported under the Clary Act in order to comply with the projected numbers from that survey, right? So somehow we're supposed to be believing these surveys, right? The, the statistics that they give us, right? Even though they completely disagree with reality by a factor of nine. That, that's, that's great. That's wonderful. Glad to hear it. We should all join you in your fantasy fucking world. All right. You got anything or banana? Banana. And we really need to phone our focus there and worry about what to do to make that better for all our students. I was wondering if you could go into the impact that your film before the hunting ground, the invisible war had on military policy surrounding sexual assault. The Pentagon received the film as a critique and not an attack. Uh huh. Okay, banana. Or you want to say anything? The Pentagon received the the film as a critique and not an attack. Oh, God, it's so fucking. Sometimes it's so difficult to un untangle these professional spinmeisters and their bullshit. You've latched on to somebody's a group of people suffering in order to push your own agenda. Which I'm not exactly sure what it is. What does it you get out of this? Maybe Amy Zero. Maybe she believes the hype. Maybe she believes it it really is the statistics are reliable and one in five college women will be raped by the the end of their their four year degree. Maybe she really believes it. And if if she does, then I can understand why she's so very, very, very prone to confirmation bias, right? That she would essentially present, you know, a number of cases in her documentary without ever investigating the veracity of their claims, without ever asking about the other side, without ever doing any kind of just take them at face value and present them as the truth, right? That seems to be what she did. So I don't know if she has an ulterior motive other than that she wants to feel like she's doing something good. And if she believes the statistics, I can't see how she wouldn't think she's doing something good. Move the, move the, move the thing, move the, move the video forward just a little bit. Oh. No, keep going. Just, let's just, let's just banana. Okay. Secretary of Defense in his office with all his top advisors. I would like for administrators and universities to take that as an example because what they did was in earnest they sort of doubled down and said okay there's a problem let's try and figure out how to fix it and now that film's a training tool on almost all army bases on a majority of air force bases. More oh so holy she shit. She wants to sell movies. That's what it is. Okay I'm going to go let my on fucking army bases. They didn't tell her to go sh You know what? Why am I surprised? Like I said before, soldiers are the most vulnerable, some of the most vulnerable people in our fucking society. They've been used as lab rats throughout all of history and thrown into ch trenches full of mustard gas. Of course they don't give a shit about them. Of course their fucking administration couldn't give two fine fucks about the soldiers. So they'll inflict this bullshit on them. Yeah. Well, I mean, why not? 
right? Because, you know, you're, you're like essentially sending men to their deaths. So like, you know, some rape education that undermines their, their sense of, you know, uh, humanity, that that's not a problem. Right. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, mute me for a second. Would you, I'm just going to be noisy here for, for a minute. Can you, can you mute me? I have, but it, the delay is really ridiculous. Okay, there we go. You're muted. But, so they don't... Well, why are you playing the video while you're muted? Okay, there... Yeah, the, the, yeah you should pause it. Okay. Look. I can't, well, I guess it, it shouldn't be surprising that the administration of, uh, of the military would be willing to put just, just guinea pig soldiers. They've done it plenty of times in the past. Um, how much longer do you need here, Karen? I, mean, I can't tell when you... Because uh, you're muted. This is like a comedy of errors. All right, I'm going to unmute you. I hope that you're not making more noise. Okay, it's pretty quiet. Okay, I'm, I'm done. Uh, yeah, no. Okay. I'm... Okay, let's just, let's just, okay, you, you've you gone backwards. That's not a good sign. So uh -oh. let's try. Okay. Yeah, let's, let's, let's just, yeah, okay. Let's uh -huh. do a couple, couple minutes here. And it actually led Secretary Panetta to change policy, which he credits the film with doing. And there have been 35 pieces of legislation written in its way. Since these people were so often... Oh, my fucking God. 35 pieces of legislation based on a lie. Yeah, well, you know, it's, it's not a whole lie. It's just kind of omitting a whole bunch of things that are true. Get up there, dog. What is it that these women want? They want to turn our fucking society into a goddamn fucking... Lynch mob? The women are automatically believe the instant they say, yeah, he did it. I you know, like, I, don't, I don't understand because, you know, one of the things that really gets me about all of this is like rape used to be a capital offense, right? And so, I mean, like you, you could, you could get executed. It was the, it was the only non-homicide crime that was still a considered a capital offense in the 20th century in the U.S., in some places, right? You could be executed for raping someone even though you didn't kill them in the 20th century in the US, right? Um, crimes against women were often considered uh, like essentially corporal offenses, right? Where you you could be flogged, you could be like publicly flogged, you know, whipping posts, all of that stuff, right? And a lot of the activism to remove those punishments, they were, female advocates, right? A lot of them were women, women's groups who were like, this is cruel and unusual punishment. This is not okay to execute people or to flog them for anything, right? And so it's like we're going, like, it's like, it's like women pushed to have these like super heavy duty penalties removed. And now they're like, you know, yeah, we don't like it. Let's 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 move. Let's let's regress back into the past, right? That it seems to be what it is. Let's have more legislation. Let's let's have more freaking this, that, and the other, right? Like they 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 I'm just thought. disturbed that these people are are actually pushing legislation. Like this 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 film is actually affecting law. Mm -hmm. Amazing. No, it's well, of course, it's 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 essentially a film that's advocating tyranny and greater government control. All right, banana, banana. How did you get them to open up to you? The kind of trauma that sexual assault in, inflicts on someone tends to have that person go very internal. It's not the kind of thing that happens to you, and then you race out and talk, or you protest, or you do things. You, you tend to be depressed. or you drag a mattress around the campus. I know, I know. Like, see, there you go. That would be like the first sign um, in my mind that Mattress Girl was being insincere and ungenuine. Is that. What, what, okay, so at least. She wanted to advertise her shame all over the campus. At least, at least three, uh, from what I've heard from Save, that's uh, uh, Safe. Um, what was it? Saveservices.org? Yeah, Saveservices.org. Uh, at least three. Stop abusive and violent environments. It's called. Okay, at least three of the of the um, of the stories in Amy Zering, The Hunting Ground. At least three of them 
were actually not accurately reported. No. So they they actually they, they, there's probably no way that they were actual rapes. Yeah. So, no. And and now she's just explaining to us how the process of interviewing it sort of uh, functions as a filter to remove those women who are probably raped and and leave only those women who probably are using it to get attention. Mm -hmm. Congratulations, Amy Zaring. Oh yeah, no. <laughs> like honestly, it. How long did it take for me to actually disclose that I was sexually assaulted? And, I mean, like at first, it was like I didn't want my dad to end up in prison because he would have probably ended up in prison for beating the shit out of the two guys, right? Um, and and I was I was kind of like embarrassed as well, like, you know, because I was completely disregarding all of the alarm bells going off in my head going, this is a stupid thing to do. This is a stupid situation to be in. Why are you actually staying in an unlit, you know, playground away from where anybody can see you? Why, why aren't you just walking towards the street where people are passing by and all of this, right? Like, you know, the, the, so, I mean, there was, there was a whole bunch of stuff, a whole bunch of reasons why I didn't, you know, disclose, right? And, oh, God, I think I was, like, 39 or 40 before I told somebody. This, this happened when I was, like, 14 years old or some shit. I was in grade 9, right? And I was, I was almost 40 before I ever told anybody and it's not I didn't tell anybody because I felt like I needed help with my trauma or anything like that it was just because I, I didn't feel particularly traumatized um it was just like okay well you know I didn't feel particularly traumatized here's why and I want to share my story so that you know um there's another perspective on the issue like it doesn't have to like make you jump at sudden noises for the rest of your life, right? Like being sexually assaulted it doesn't have to like cripple you emotionally. Um, but even I, who was not significantly, I, I can't really say that I was affected by it. Um, I, I just, it, it, it just didn't even occur to me to share that. It was just like a, a lesson that I learned. Oh, I was dumb. I'll, be smarter in the future, right? Like, I, I just, so, but yeah, like even, even just like, I would never have shared that. If I was like in college or something, I would never have shared that. Oh yeah, I've been sexually assaulted, right? I certainly wouldn't have given, given her what she needs for a freaking documentary on it. Cause I was like, oh fuck, it was no big deal. All right, banana. Never. harm. Agoraphobia can be one of the symptoms. What's different is because of the internet and ability for survivors to form networks and communities in the safety of their own home, they have become more encouragement to speak up and men need less. I Two know. minutes, huh? Two minutes out of the hours and hours and hours of footage that you filmed of adult or of male survivors. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Yeah, I, I know. guess they just weren't pretty enough for you. You got to put the pretty ones out in the front. For the pimping. Know, women need so much encouragement to speak up, you know, like the whole Oxford Dictionary rabid feminist controversy of a few days ago, right? Oh, they need so much courage, so much courage to say, that's sexist, you should change it. It hurts my feelings, it offends me, it outrages me, change it. How could you use rabid feminist as an example for the word rabid? I was like, I saw that and I was like, fucking hilarious. That's awesome. I hope that they like, you know, use feminist as their examples of like zealous and, you know, hypocritical and all kinds. Bigoted, of sexist. Yeah, yeah. You know, supremacist and. All kinds of other, you know, words that I, I think I think they should use that um, that use feminist as, as an example for all of them because you know, like like how, who in their right mind thinks that women have a hard time speaking up compared compared to anybody else, right? Children have a hard time speaking up. Men have a hard time speaking up. 
they particularly have a hard time speaking up if a woman is their abuser, whether it's physical or sexual. But let's keep let's keep beating that female victimhood drum. I'm sure it's going to benefit everyone. Okay, everyone. Here we go. It'll it'll help men too. You, you heard that straight from Allison's mouth. People who are willing to talk to us because I had that kind of as a calling card. Is there any advice that you can give women freshly entering college? But the first thing I'll say is, if this happens to you, it's not your fault, and you should never think there was something you could have done. Why not? What? Why not? Because that removes, when you think there is nothing you could have done, it removes your sense of agency, it removes your sense of self-empowerment, it removes your sense of, I can prevent this from happening to me again. And it keeps you in a perpetual state of fear and helplessness. That's and why see, you should never think there was anything you could have done. Rage, Karen. Rage. Yeah, this is the and this is the payload. This is what they want to teach girls is nothing you can do ever affects your work reality. And the most important thing that could ever happen to you is being raped. It'll be your defining life event. Nothing that you do say or ever create will be greater than having been raped. That will be that's it. It's it you you it's like you become a person when you're raped as a woman. You become a real girl when you get raped. But okay, until then for a second God, you're going to be, uh, hello. I can't mute you very quickly there, Karen. It takes a while for it to take. So you become a real person when you get raped. <laughs> Until then, you're just like, you're a non-person. You're not, this is going to be your defining life event. To be raped as a woman. Nothing you do or say or ever will accomplish will be greater than having been raped. And you cannot stop it from happening. You are simply the clay upon which men write their horrible desires. Jesus fucking Christ. I think this is the payload. Let's see if Karen is done. You know, the problem with me muting you, Karen, is I don't know when you're done. And ready I, to I know, I know. It was, it was just a very, I had to take the call because it's for uh, a speaking engagement, so. Okay. It wasn't the police, though, because they haven't shown. Is it the diversity panel? Uh, it's not the diversity panel. No, she. I. I. I emailed her back, and then she never got back to me. I think that that's no, a no go. Then. Yeah. All right. It's been like days since she uh, since I emailed her back, and she has not responded let's, at all. Let's try to let's try to finish this clusterfuck of a show. Okay. I really want the focus to be on. Let's try and figure out how to stop perpetrators from committing these crimes, then from figuring out victims of these crimes how to better protect themselves. Why not? Because that would empower the potential victims. It would empower women. It would empower women, and we can't have that, right? So we should just try to talk nicely to the sociopaths and the psychopaths out there who are the majority of men who rape, right? Maybe they're not all of them, right? Maybe David Lisak's research, you know, on, on rape and recidivism, you know, 4%, 6% of men commit one, 90% of the, 4% of men, sorry, commit 90% of the campus rapes. The other 2% commit the other. Wait, wait, I got to correct you. I got to correct you, Karen. It, that those results may apply to recidivism of rapists may actually apply to rapists, but they don't apply to college men. So it's it, not it, actually 4%. There's of no the reason. reason there's no reason to think that the profile of a rapist changes the moment he steps onto a college campus and then changes back when he steps off of it. So No, but the thing is that what, what they're doing with that Lissix numbers is saying that 4% or 6% of college men rape, that's bullshit. It's probably not like it's probably not that at all. What the, the numbers that he used don't apply to college men. Well, they may apply to the general population, yeah. but they don't apply necessarily to college men. True. So um, it's you, what you're saying is accurate in that it does indicate that most rapes are done by sociopaths or, or men with very, very, very different uh, behavioral patterns than average men. Yes. Like th these guys are not going to stop because they said we're told nicely. They yeah. are compelled to do it. They are compelled to do it. Yeah. And the women who do it are compelled to do it as well. Of course, they're completely ignored in this entire conversation. Mm -hmm. But yeah. These men are compelled to do it. And if you really want to stop them, 
then you need to, to start intervening on behalf of abused teen boys who are being abused by women for the, for the, for the most part. That's yeah. where you need to get these guys and start to give them therapy and get over the abuse that was done to them. But putting up posters and asking nicely is not going to do a damn thing. You Recognizing that women rape will. You know what? You know what I think, and and I think that the reason why um, it's predominantly men who are abused by women, um, who were abused by women, who who end up going on to this uh, to to this kind of behavior, and they don't not all of them, but many of them, right? A significant like. The majority of men who do this kind of behavior were sexually abused by women, and it's it's and and it's not the same. I don't think it's the same with boys and adolescent boys who were sexually abused by men because the entire culture looks at that and is horrified and they understand that it's wrong, right? But when the entire culture looks at a, a twelve-year-old boy whose teacher grooms him and and sexually abuses him he gets he gets um high-fived that's gonna fuck you up oh my god what the hell is that music it's my fucking phone turn the phone off i'm gonna i'm gonna like oh, just turn it off like can't you just like isn't there an off button on these things, or did you just I constantly on off? Of where it was. Okay. All right. Okay. Can let's let's just move on. Okay, moving. I'm on. increasingly irritated by this whole she shebang. Yeah. Look at her. Look at her. Thigh high boots. Right. Nice black stockings. Oh my goodness, she's so sexy. Sorry. Commenting on her clothes again. The reason yes. hunting ground is we want it, people to get away from this thought of it's he said, she said, it's a date rape, it's murky, we don't know. It's like, actually, no, what studies show and we've seen is it's target rape. This is a premeditated crime by people who really know what they're doing. What advice would you give men entering colleges and universities? There's a great new program um, called Bystander Intervention because what we found is that um, men really need to understand how these crimes are committed and how to better recognize them. Sorry, I'm just banana. Okay, okay, so wait a second. Women can't be given any information how to prevent rapes happening to them, but somehow male bystanders can. Yeah. Does that even fucking make any fucking sense? Uh, it does, because men are agents and, and women are objects, right? Oh, okay, so, banana. Yeah, yeah, there we go. That, that's, how, that's how it works, Allison. That's, that's the narrative. And it makes perfect sense when you, when you put it in that framework. Because it's more common for men to not want to at all interfere in another man's sexual business, obviously. And it's fucking nuts. There's so oh, no. many goddamn white knights salivating at the idea of interfering with another man's goddamn sexual business. They even have a word for it. They have a word for it. It's called cock blocking. Yeah. Like, this is essential. Okay, this is a really fucked up still. Well, I told you she she's looked still. She's receiving a message from the mothership. I'm gonna make my download so that we can see her. Look at look look at look at her. She looks like she's in uh, that horror movie, Mama. Okay, this is like she's. Couldn't they have chosen someone? I mean, unless she's saying she's ugly, but she's sort of scary. Yeah, no, like just her. Um, like when you when she talks, her hair kind of shivers in this like she's like vibrating. Yeah, like, I, I I have no idea what's going on with her, but okay. Um, let's 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 bring it back to the actual like also I, you know, I, I have no idea what I was talking about. Who could wear anything this tight across the neck? I don't know. Well, you know what? I do, this, this is sort of irrelevant. These are irrelevant details. Okay, I understand I'm, people I'm, are going to get pissed. Like maybe she's maybe she's actually blacking out from like pressure on her uh, on her um, jugular veins. Or maybe she's just blinking, and we just uh, caught her at a really her, bad moment. Her shirt has her in a sleeper hold. All right. Yeah. To do so, right? A lot of these fraternity brothers have said to me, you know, they're now going to listen differently when they hear the stories of their brothers. You, in the past, they would, obviously, the guy would say, oh, she's a slut, she's a whore, she's lying. No, 
No, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no. Oh, she's a slut. She's a whore. She's lying. Uh, yeah, maybe it's your, if it's your best friend or something like that, but I don't think that's common response from men. I'm just, um, you know what I'm thinking? Especially, especially men who were bystanders. If there were men who were at the party and watched the buildup, right, I don't think that there are men who would say, she's a slut, she's a whore, she's lying, unless she was, like, freaking climbing him like a fire pole until they went upstairs. Okay, all right. And, and once again, we're, we've we've paused on yet another sort of creepy still of this woman. Oh, oh, she's beautiful. She looks even more like a she looks even more like a vi a Disney villainess. Okay, all right. Like like just get rid of her her like corneas here and just like make it just pure white, the whites of her eyes, and she'd be like she would be a Disney villainess. Okay. All right, okay, okay. But to to go back to what you're saying, um, this all reminds me. Did you read that article about the? Uh, the the I guess the thirty year old reporter who went to a frat house and was hoping that I don't know she'd mm -hmm. get banged. Did you read that? It was hilarious. It was like she must have watched this movie and thought frat she houses thought were really. Be, she thought it would be like Caligula, yeah, okay. and it turned out to be like oh well. There's like all these guys who look awkward and like they want to approach girls and you know and they just need to have another beer before they can get up the courage and. You know, and it's just she. No, I, but she even I, described them. She, she described, described them like the they were little kids. As a middle school dance, where all the guys are on one side of the room and all the girls are on one the other side of the gymnasium, and nobody has the courage to approach. Yeah, like yeah. that's it. And she was describing these guys from the fraternity. They were just they look like um. Well, of yeah. course they're in their early, they're in their late teens, so they still have that quality of being just on the cusp of adulthood. Yeah, they still look like kids. Yeah. And so there's all these like fresh baby faced kids or young men and they were totally and utterly innocuous. Yep. And she, she, she was expecting to go to this. She probably had some sort of vision of some sort of like, um, I don't know, you know, gigantic jock with a chiseled jaw and like, who would just like, just take her over her protests. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like 30 plus year old mutton. And and drag yeah. her by the air up to some upstairs bedroom. So you should probably like, fantasizing and hoping about. You know what, Amy Ziering, you are you are false advertising for these older women, these cougars who want to go to a frat house and get pummeled by some no, by some I, massively masculine jock. No, actually, you know, young men from the ages you know, who are just who are who are barely out of their teens don't look, don't necessarily look like that or act like that. Surprisingly, yeah. Because, no, I'm, like every experience I have had with with uh, boys that age has been like, um, even if they're persistent in their advances, right? Like just from from my experience in in the nineteen eighties, right? Even if they're persistent in their advances, they're not so persistent that it's anything more than a nuisance, right? Um, and then when you actually deign to give them some kind of positive reinforcement, it's like they've been touched by the hand of God. Yeah, and, and I just found it hilarious. And at the end of the night, she was taking a picture of, uh, of two of these young kids can doodling, and another of the frat brothers walked over to her and said, you know, that's not, that's not good. That's not nice. Don't, yeah. don't, don't. Don't you old fucking bat pervert? Don't be taking yeah. pictures of other people while they're in a sexual, you know, or or, or kissing. Yeah, no, people are like making out, and you're like taking photos of them. That's like kind of pervy, don't you think? Yeah, that's exactly what she said. She goes so this 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 Amy Zeering clone goes to a frat party, finds out that it is nothing like Caligula, and there are no massive bloody gladiators who are gonna take grab her by her hair and rape her against a wall. Of course, it wouldn't be rape because, you know, that's sort of what she went for. But, mm -hmm. you know, there's nothing like that. There's no orgy. There's no, like, drugs. There's just a bunch of awkward, you know, young, just out of their teens kids trying to, trying, to, trying to talk each other up. And that's it. And then she's the one who's perving out on everyone there. And it's yeah. the one who's called out for it. Yep. Yeah. Woman, heal thyself. Pervert. Yep. 
Yeah. Heal thyself. <laughs> it was beautiful. It was yeah. absolutely beautiful. It was it was it was the most awesome article ever. I, I think I think these old women, like these older women should should they should all do this. They should all go they should all go deep undercover in the in the less dens that are fraternities and find out what they're really like. You know, there there's there's a uh, a fellow men's advocate that I know. He told me he had gone to that school. You remember where that uh, public, you know, they were leaning up against a, a bank and it was a bank uh, window on Main Street. I think it was, uh, uh, fuck, it was in Ohio. But it was it was this university that's like out in the middle of nowhere. Um, I forget what it was called, but it, the, the guy was giving her cunnilingus. It was filmed. And uh, and it went viral, and the next and and she was like pulling her head, his head onto her, and like smiling at the people who were holding up their cell phones, filming it, and like encouraging him and stuff, right? And uh, and then the next uh, day or two days later, when after it had gone viral, this video, um, she got in trouble. And she accused him of, of sexual assault because she was drunk. Well, they were both drunk, right? And uh, so it was two people performing a public sex act and that for which they would both get in trouble. And she decided she was going to make an accusation of sexual assault in order to avoid culpability for that. Um, but he said he went to this university um, to see what was what because it's this university... Um, that is situated kind of like a hundred miles from the nearest big city, but it's got a reputation as being one of the top 10 party universities in the United States. So he decided he was going to go there and he said all around the campus for about three blocks, there's nothing but fast food places and bars. And there's this one week and it's called mom's weekend or something like that where the moms of all of the students, right, go to spend a weekend with their children. Um, and it's like this big event, right? And he said he's in the bar during mom week and he's watching all of these 40, 50 year old married women essentially seducing young freshmen, sophomore college men in the bars like spending money buying them drinks getting them fucking hammered taking them back to their hotels and just banging the shit out of them and he's just he, he was just like it is the most fucked up thing i have ever seen like he, he was just he was just blown away right he, he actually went there specifically to see this because he'd heard rumors somebody from the college who was a woman, but who was there on a visa or something like that. She's a foreign student. And she was just, um, she was just like, you, you would not believe this shit that goes on here. Right. And he was like, oh my God, these, these 40, 50 year old women are getting these young men drunk and then taking them off to a hotel room and, and fucking them and then going home to their husbands and saying, oh, it was a great weekend with our daughter. Well, you know, we got to make sure that uh, older women get their. <sighs> so I mean, like, what a bunch of goddamn hypocrites! Yeah, no, it's 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 like completely fucked up. It's completely, completely, fucking like the whole thing is fucking weird. And what do you think that this, this is, is actually Amy Deering's fantasy? Oh God, I can only imagine. I can only imagine that the reason she made this movie was because she didn't want to buy a bunch of guys, young guys drinks, get them hammered, and then spring for the hotel room. Right? Yeah, she didn't want to get the real hip She wanted them to, like, club her over the head and drag her off by her hair. Yeah, it's not good enough, you know, the, it's, that she has to make an effort. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. I don't okay. Know. What we're hoping now, men with this better education and understanding, they might go, well, it's kind of weird for her to lie about that. Kind of nothing to be gained. Have, and nothing to be gained except international notoriety as the woman who carried a mattress for two whole semesters. Oh. Nothing to be gained but revenge. Nothing to be gained but, 
you know, sticking it to the guy that you that pissed you off. Nothing to be gained but an alibi for that STD or that pregnancy. Nothing to be gained by, you know, but uh, the excuse, you know, oh, I, I didn't show up for my bar exams 11 times, so I'll make 11 accusations of rape. Can we do it the other way? Okay. Like, uh, I mean, you say that there's nothing to be gained by a false rape. There's nothing also to be gained by a rape. I mean, a man gains nothing. Well, I mean, really, if you think about it. If, if, if we are indeed creatures of desire and wanting to be desired, you don't gain a damn thing through rape. So the only other explanation for why men and women do it is because they're fucked in the head. Yeah. And so, but we don't we can't do that. We can't say that well what why rape? Why why would why would this particular man, why would he rape? We gotta prove that he's the kind of person he's a fucking idiot. He's got that brain lobe dysfunction that makes him want to desire rejection when every other normal human being doesn't. Yeah. It's like eating shit for us, but he loves the shit or she loves eating shit. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a three course full, you know, like a four star meal to the rapist. But yeah. yeah. But it does that logic doesn't work the other way around. It works this way, but not the other way around. Yeah. Because we still think that women's bodies just 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 their bodies mm -hmm. just, just just completely empty of any kind of spark of desire is what men are after. Mhm. Mm All right. Even though, you know, studies show it's not when the attractive woman it's not just looking at the attractive woman, it's when the attractive woman looks at the guy yeah. that he gets that that shot of dopamine. So yeah. it's not really about the body. It's about it's about being attracted attractive to an attractive person. Yep. Yeah. yeah, anyway. That's right. might be too rarefied for people to understand what the fuck I'm talking about. Well, I mean, men want to be wanted by women that they find attractive and that's uh, same with women. Women want to be wanted by men they find attractive. The the difference seems to be that that when women the men don't find attractive don't want them they or when women men don't find attractive do want them men are much more graceful regarding uh you know uh well maybe they're not more graceful they just don't have to do the rejecting so often well yeah or, or they're just you know they're just assholes too i mean it's the people who reject can be assholes yeah, but you know, like men, men don't men don't have as many uh, as many situations in which they're rejecting the sexual, the clear sexual advances of another person. They just don't, right? Women women have lots of opportunities to like veto, to say no, right? Um, to to exercise their veto power and say, yeah, no, I reject you. Right, men don't so much because women don't approach them. Right, a woman might be, you know, longing for a guy, but she she won't necessarily approach him and make her intentions clear. Okay, so this is the third still, and I think it's actually been more. This is the third since I'm keeping track that this woman has given the same sort of bizarre, heavy lidded look. Is yeah. she sitting on some sort of vibrating pad? Like, like what? What is? What is? Is she on something? This I is this is starting to get a little weird. Yeah, I think she might be just chronically nervous, maybe. I don't know. Many fraternities reached out to you. Look at the way her hair wiggles. Well, I mean, it's, it's probably because it's falsely ironed. Like, uh, you know, not falsely ironed. I don't mean falsely ironed, but it's like they, they do that hot iron thing, which know, makes but, wiggly hair, I think. Well, I don't know. She, she's she got wig Like, she's her hair is just as prone to wiggling, this, this chick, but it's not. Right, because her head isn't moving, her head isn't vibrating or moving jerkily. At University of Delaware and three fraternity brothers came up to the microphone and they said, you know, we don't have a question, we just want to tell you we're all in. Like this film completely changed us, we're going to screen at our fraternity house, we want to protect our sisters, we want to protect our, you know, our, our girlfriends. And that was I know, I know, it's the most amazing thing. You ask patriarchy to give women what they want, and patriarchy gives it to them. I mean, it's like just the most amazing thing. Um, you know, you, you say patriarchy, women want to feel safe, and patriarchy says, sure, whatever you want, ladies, we'll make you feel safe. We'll bid you a fucking wall. We won't let you actually fuck. 
you know, and this is the funny thing is what, what they're doing is they're saying, yes, we'll be their chaperones. Mm -hmm. We'll be their chaperones. We'll make sure they don't have sex with anyone drunkenly. We'll be the white knights that they need. Like what the, you no, know, this was no. the system we had 60 years ago. We'll be her mar, her mar, M-A-H-R. We'll be her male relative who escorts her to the bazaar to do her shopping and then escorts her home back to the safety of her house, right? Jesus he doesn't need to go out in public without a male protector. I thought we did away with this story. It's like, oh, the, the, no. the, <laughs> oh my fucking God. So why don't we just assign each woman a goddamn male chaperone and be done with it? Well, because then that would inhibit women's freedoms, Allison. How the fuck are you? Yeah, so, but that is. Wait. You can't have an assigned male chaperone, Allison. You can't have an assigned male chaperone the, the way they do in Saudi Arabia, where it's some male who's a blood relation to you or your husband, right? Who chaperones you out in public. No, 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 no. All men, every single man on the planet must act as any woman's chaperone and protector at any given time at any given moment, if she is in his vicinity, whether he knows her or not, doesn't matter, right? He must act. And if he interrupts her, if it's coitus interruptus, when she wanted it to go on, she can be mad at him. And But, you know, he really is better safe than sorry because really, you know, uh, w women, women are victims and, and they need men's protection. Yes. Yes. All right, moving on. That's pretty even though, you know, even it's Even though, okay, I, I just want to point this out. Even though having multiple male chaperones is actually less likely to result in women's safety than just one who's tasked. I mean, it, it's much better to have one bodyguard who just goes with you everywhere. Yep. Makes sure you're safe. It's much more efficient. Yep. Than just expecting every random male around but simultaneously expecting every random male around to want to rape you, but also function as your fucking bodyguard. Yeah. But, I mean, implicit in that is that there is a subset of men who will rape and then the larger subset of men who will function as women's bodyguards. Mm -hmm. Well, from that, can't you just say, well, you got to protect yourself from the predators? No, that's not acceptable. No. Women are, women's existence is entirely defined, entirely defined by the men around them. Mm-hmm. Because they have no ability to act themselves. You know, we should... Th th I reject this stupid narrative just because it requires me to play a part, a single part, and that is victim or damsel. Well, Fuck it. well I don't want to be white now. I'll protect myself. Thank in, you. In the game of patriarchy, women aren't the opposing team, Allison. They're the ball. Then this woman is the game of patriarchy. She's essentially yeah. saying... Let's play the game of patriarchy, bitch. Yeah, no, and, and, and women are the ball, and one team is the rapists, and the other team is the white knights. And and they're going to play with with the ball and see, you know, who who ends up with control of the ball. We, we hope it's the white knights, because we didn't tell the ball how to actually do anything. We didn't instruct the ball that the ball is actually, you know, autonomous and in control of its own destiny, at least in part. Uh, yeah, no, 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 no. The ball needs to just rely on some random battle between the rapists and the white knights. That's 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 how how this is how it works. This oh. is the most retarded shit I've ever heard. How oh. can women just swallow this shit? I. And and why does she why is she surprised that these young men like this shit? I I, I, I need, saying I need more wine. You 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 go do battle over this fucking ball. This woman who's a ball. You just you yeah, you're but you're on the side of light, sir. You are on the side of light. Well, what about the side that doesn't think that women should be balls in battles between white knights and rapists? Yeah. What side are we on? Well, except for that we tell women that there are things that they can do to be more confident, to not be afraid, to embrace their agency, to acknowledge their role in 
the things that happen to them uh, if there is a role and to acknowledge when there is no role they played but also to acknowledge when there is and you know and that makes us like victim blamers and rape apologists because yeah you know what's interesting about us is that what we do is we emphasize the women's agency and their ability to take effective action to change the outcomes of their circumstances so we're the ones who are emphasizing that no women aren't balls they're fellow players yeah. She's the one that's emphasizing the idea that a woman only exists to be a point scoring mechanism for men's actions. And she's baffled that a bunch of young men who want to get points are okay. excited by that. Yeah, I know. I know. It's like fucking retarded. She's. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Amy Zimmering, Zering, you, you've, you've discovered the wheel. All right. Yeah. And also, your nostrils are incredible. Yeah. These crimes. But our culture, you know, and these institutions give them cover. So most men are horrified and really want to do the right thing. How prevalent? Wait, 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 wait. Most men are horrified and do want to do the right thing. But at the same time, institutions want to help rapists. I know, but so the, who are fanning the institutions? Women? I'm. Don't ask difficult questions, Allison. I fuck. That's my job. They need more wine. Okay. Okay, I'm I'm just gonna pour more wine and then we're gonna move on, cause oh, I unbelievable. Like I'm I'm just like uh, yeah no the patriarchal institutions are the ones who can solve the problems of patriarchy. It's 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 like um, no, no, but this is what she's saying. Most men want to protect yeah. women from rape, mm -hmm. but the institutions yeah that don't. are by most men don't want to protect women from rape. Yeah, well, the they, they were preferred to protect their reputations. Yeah. Well, maybe maybe you're actually slandering the reputation based on stuff that you don't that based on stuff that's false. Is that yeah. a possibility? Was that within your constellation of concepts, Amy Zingering? Okay. No, 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 no. I mean, just because just because your average rape survey for campuses has a response rate of under twenty percent doesn't mean anything. All right, moving on. Violence upon men. The only thing I'll say is we don't have fantastic information because men also, because of all the social stigmas, are less likely to come forward and talk about this having happened to them. Men in positions of submission to another man and sexual submission. This is bullshit. This is yeah. bullshit. No, no, no. They no. actually do we, have some preliminary men surveys. They're way more likely to report being raped by a man than they are to report being raped by a woman, you stupid How is she managing the asymmetrical nose action there? Um, I think it's just She's got an asymmetrical face. I mean, if you sort of look at her, her mouth turns down here, right? Uh, she's got a Jessica Valenti thing going on. Or does she? Is she sneering? Because I didn't see the asymmetry before. Okay, well, let's. I kind of, I kind of spotted it, but maybe. that's pretty severe asymmetry. I think that's a snare, but it's an interesting place to be sneering about male. You know, I, I, I'm not sure why. I'm sensing a sneer while she's talking about male rape victims. I could be completely fucking wrong. No, no, that is that is that 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 well, right look, that left nostril is going up. Quite, it's her. This corner of her mouth is quite a bit lower. I think she probably this is the mobile side of her face. So, um, okay. let's, not let's, not, every, not everybody is is beautiful like me, Allison. The submission to another man. Okay. Submission. The, Okay, but I, I don't know what's going. No, this is a this is a greater asymmetry. But regardless, what she's saying is bullshit. First of all, she's emphasizing men as victims of other men, which is yeah. actually the minority of male victims. Yeah, the majority of male victims are victims of women. Usually, women like you know, as as Her uh, Karen was saying, Amy Zim Zimmering type women, older women going and uh, partaking in the college male college freshman meet. And maybe yeah. getting a little bit too forceful about it, but uh, regardless, if there and first of all, there are statistics on the rate of sexual abuse of college and high school boys. They exist. They are preliminary. They aren't. They aren't comprehensive. And there's also statistics on the rate of sexual abuse of college men in relationships and heterosexual relationships. These statistics exist, and they paint a very interesting picture, because if you ask them. Similar questions to the, the, the questions that Mary Koss asked 
you get very similar results. Yeah. Something like, uh, actually, you get higher results. Yeah. Now, this do. is over their lifetime, but college-age men report between 40 and 50%. 40 to 50% sexual, sexually abused or raped. Like, and, and some of it is, some of what they asked was a little bit bizarre. For example, the, re the researchers would classify a woman sexually touching a man after he's indicated he does not want to be touched until he gives into sex with, to her as something called seduction. Now, I'm not quite sure why they would use the term seduction <laughs> because touching someone after they've said, please stop, or indicated that they want you to stop touching them, generally is considered sexual assault. And yeah. sexually assaulting someone until they just give up and just let you do what they want, what you want, I don't wouldn't consider that seduction as such. Yeah. Now, if, if the guy is like, you know, saying no, but really means yes, I'm not sure. I don't think that was really what the, the uh, researchers were capturing. I'm pretty sure that guys would say, no, I just... I was just playing or some shit. You know, I didn't actually. They, they, they clarified. Did you actually mean no? Yes, I actually meant no, but she kept touching me and I figured it wasn't going to stop till I had sex, so I just gave her sex. Yeah. And that's seduction. I, yeah, I would consider that at least sexual assault. Oh, yeah. yeah not necessarily rape, but sexual assault. Yeah. Um, and so essentially that entire 40 to 50% is sexual assault or rape. Sexual yeah. assault or rape. Sexual, 40 to 50% of college age men report sexual, having been sexually assaulted or raped in their lifetime. 95% of them by women. 95% of them by women. 95% of them by a female acquaintance. The other 5% may be by men or women, men that they know or don't know, or women that they don't know. So, yeah. So this is this is the situation, and these statistics are out there. So she could have found them. Yeah. And she and and she obviously knows. She obviously interviewed the rape victims, male rape victims for the for the other one that she did, the invisible something or other. Invisible and war. The invisible war. She did that for the invisible war. She interviewed them, so she was aware of them. But of course, only two minutes got into the final film. Yeah. So I'm sure in this instance, she's also aware that there is an unbelievably high level of rape of, of, and sexual abuse of men on college campuses. But of course, it yeah. doesn't fit her fat file. So she just <laughs> ignores it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Because uh, we got to get through this. It is not really part of our macho masculine and cult patriarchal culture. So um, that's a very hard and embarrassing thing to own up or to admit. And then also, of course, the homophobia. So does it. Okay, but what about the, like, how does homophobia factor into, like, being taken advantage of by a woman, being uh, sexually assaulted by a woman, being forced into sex or coerced into sex by a woman? How does, how does that factor in? Because that's the majority of cases, not, not the, what you're talking about, right? So I, I don't, I don't like what, what exactly are you, you, you look like you're, uh, you look like you don't quite believe yourself, but moving on. Imply you're, you know, did you do something? Is it your sexual orientation? I think both of those things contribute to it being very hard and shameful. And there's a real stigma around men feeling they can admit to this having happened to them. This, okay. Can I just, can, I gotta get this off my chest. Look at her nodding. Look at she's she's on fucking drugs. I'm sorry. She's okay. like freaking whacked out on coke. Okay, all right. Amy Zering. How many men opened up to you in the invisible war and got ended up on the cutting room floor because of your choices? And then you have the gall to turn around and talk about why men don't open up. Yeah. They don't open up because people like you think that their stories are fucking irrelevant. Mm -hmm. okay, well, actually, they'll, you'll invite them to open up and make them think that people will give a shit. And then you turn around and you have to slap a fucking gag on them. You, Amy Zering, did that. You know, the worst, the worst thing 
if you're a child who's being abused, is not feeling like you can't tell anybody. That's not the worst thing, right? The worst thing is phoning, you know, watching TV and seeing, you know, when I was a kid, it was uh, phone Zenith 1234, right? Child helpline. Phoning that and telling your story and having them not believe you. That's the worst thing. That's worse than feeling like you can't tell anybody, is taking the step to tell somebody and having them ignore it, having them dismiss it. That's the worst thing. Yeah, and that's basically what she did. Yeah. All right, moving. You don't have a fucking leg to stand on, Amy Zering or Zering. Oh, she's just, I don't know. I just, I'm, I'm just, I just want to get through this. This is, this is excruciating. This is like, it's painful. Really? Well, obviously it must be because she was coked out to get through it. Yeah. There, were, there was no shame around this and everybody could come forward and report it and really know how, how frequently this is happening to men as well. Oh, you really don't want to know how frequently it's happening to men as well, because you know what? That would implicate a whole bunch of women. You know, and you know, she can't find those statistics. She can't find those statistics the way a thief can't find a fucking cop. You know, like honestly, honestly, there there is a uh, a large. It's it's. I found it. I've linked it a few times, right? But there's a large sort of um, abstract of a survey paper, right? That was done on female sexual aggression against men. And it looked at a whole, like the, the abstract looks at a whole bunch of different surveys and it found rates of women self-reporting using aggressive tactics. That means either force, uh, coercion, right? Threats, threats with a weapon, physical uh, violence, um, or a man's incapacitated state to get sex from a man that they knew was unwilling to have sex. And the numbers on that ranged from 15% of women self-reported this behavior, having done it, having done it, not would do it if they thought they could get away with it and no one would know, but having done it in the past to over 40%, right? Having done this, having done this, having engaged in these aggressive tactics in order to, oh my fucking God, get sex from an unwilling man. Oh my God, I'm gonna fucking strangle him. Unplug it. All right. I can't, it's, it's okay, let's just move on. It'll it'll ring one more time and then. And All right. My answering machine, but okay, moving on. Do you think that opening up the conversation surrounding sexual assault on college campuses will lead to bigger conversations about sexual assault in high schools this is part of the national discourse now in a way okay can't we can't go back on and i do think it will have this ripple effect and continue to filter out throughout our society in really important ways we focus on these institutions because there is something unique and categorically different about them um, that allows these crimes to proliferate at these epidemic levels in a way that they don't, they can't in society at large. Oh my fucking god, just mute me. I got, he wants to call about the freaking cops and the cars. Yeah, but they're not there yet. Okay. I know. I, mute me. All right. Okay, so now we're going to be looking at Amy Zingering for about, I don't know, however minute, many minutes that it takes for Karen to deal with this. Incidentally, her boyfriend called the cops on the issue of her cars being broken into or their cars being broken into so unfortunately we have to pause the show so that karen can deal with with this and with the issue of their cars being broken into I, I i there's nothing i can do about it and i apologize for the inconvenience of having to wait while we deal with this issue um i have really nothing to say at the moment because i aside from the fact that she's i can't fucking believe that amy zingering was saying that men can't don't have don't feel like they can be heard when they speak or don't feel like they can speak. Well, of course, because when they speak, people like Amy Zingering ignore them. 
or pretend that they're going to listen and then ignore them. And I have no idea if you want me to unmute you yet, Karen, so I'm just going to do it. Anyway, hopefully that was solved. windrows, which will never happen because okay, they won't okay. ever plow our fucking street, so. Ah, uh, okay. Apparently still still ongoing the drama of the of the actual uh, okay. I, uh, are you ready? All right. Okay. Okay. Bye. Okay, let's this has gotta be the worst rant zerker ever. All right, let's let's finish this. Okay, am I unmuted? Yes, you're unmuted. I unmuted you a while back and then I muted you again and apparently Google just decided to not work. Oh my fucking god. Like he he just he's just like uh, did the cops come? Did the cops come yet? And I'm just like, no, they haven't fucking arrived yet. Jesus. All right. Okay. Move on. And right, because campuses and the military, they're both target-rich environments with a young transient population. There's a lot of ample opportunity for predators to commit these crimes because there's parties and socializing frequently, ubiquitously. Rape myths and rape culture give these crimes cover, and these institutions don't have good mechanisms. Mm. This is in place to, to adjudicate them. So if you have predators... Yes, because they're fucking colleges. Yeah, they're not colleges. You, know, yeah, you know what has a mechanism in place, which is a mechanism in place to deal with rape? It's called the criminal justice system. Use it! Oh, but, you know, Allison, Allison, oh. you know, like, this is one of the things that drives me fucking crazy about the whole rape thing. Right, because we treat it differently from any other serious felony, right? And then we wonder why, why, why is it so difficult to secure a conviction? Which it's really not. But um, okay, so if I were to go into a into an emergency room with a gunshot wound, right, and I, I go in there and I'm looking for treatment, and I swear up and down that I just had an accident cleaning my gun. And it's no big deal. It was just it was just my stupid mistake. Nobody was like nobody committed a crime. It was just an accident, right? They have to phone the police. It's required legally that they phone the police to report that perhaps there was a felony committed. Maybe. Even if I swear up and down there wasn't, right? But I can go into the exact same emergency room the next day and say a serious felony was committed, I was raped, and they are not allowed to call the police without my permission. And then they wonder, why is reporting of rape so low? Because nobody wants to fucking report it to the fucking... All oh, right, look, and look at the numbers here. Dartmouth College, for in 12 years, or sorry, 11 years, 155 uh, Report. reported assaults. So that's a... That's about 15 per year. Wow, that's quite the epidemic. Yeah, yeah, no, it's 15 per year out of, I don't know, several thousand students, maybe, you know, like 10,000 students per year, right? Even if you, like... <sighs> I'm not going to be scared of going to Dartmouth College. Sorry, Amy Zering. Zering. Okay, but let's, 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 let's continue, because we're getting close. We're getting to the end. In an environment where they can commit these crimes ad infinitum and three expulsions yeah because you know why because they're not necessarily sexual assaults and if they are sexual assaults right these are sexual misconduct cases right if they are sexual assaults they might be like dude grinded up against her on the dance floor right or it might be like a he said, she said case where they're like, oh, well, we're 50.01% sure it happened, but we're not sure enough to completely ruin this man's life. Well, wait, here's the other thing. Colleges have no ability to deal with forensic evidence. Mm -hmm. They have not. So this is all basically just them adjudicating over he said, she said situations. This yeah. is bullshit. Yeah, no, and... and the thing too, right, is is if you actually look at the severity of the punishment, um, people are, even looking at the death penalty, people are going to require a, a higher degree of certainty when they are convicting somebody uh, to the fucking electric chair or lethal injection than if they're just committing them to life in prison, right? That's the, the severity of the punishment makes people demand a higher degree of certainty.
Yeah. Okay. But let's see what her conclusion is. Let's try to get through this. No means or mechanisms in place that can impede them from doing so. You're going to see these epidemic numbers over and over again. It does seem that. Okay, but uh, reported sexual assaults. Okay, I want to know what those are, and I want to know the evidence in all of those cases, and I want to know because you know, honestly, when when you look at the uh, the process of investigation for some of these university tribunals, right? They're they're essentially um, they're they're looking at oh I don't know uh, testimony by both the individuals. And, and they, they might consider text messages before and after the fact, right? Um, but only if the, uh, if the defendant or the respondent uh, managed to collect them. Um, they don't, they, like, how, how the fuck do you, how? You, you just, what they want to see here is 136 reported sexual assault and 136 expulsions. Well, what, but the problem with that too is that if these things never get reported to the police, right, then this person is not on the police's radar. So then, okay, they get expelled. Best case scenario, they get expelled, right? They're free to continue to commit sexual assaults in the wider community, right? Their name's not on a fucking police blotter anywhere, right? When they, when some other woman, the tenth woman that they sexually assault, comes forward and actually reports it, because these same freaking feminists say that only ten percent of women report their assaults, right? So when the tenth woman finally comes forward and reports it, that guy's name's not a com on a on a police blotter, right? And and so they don't have all of you know the evidence from the. It's just like I'm I'm fucking sorry. College campuses should not be adjudicating these kind of fucking... They shouldn't be dealing with these kind of criminal proceedings. You're, you're saying you'd rather expel a man and have him go on to victimize again than have a woman have to go through the hassle of reporting to police. I, I, okay, let's, let's keep going. Professional athletes, specifically football players, are given a pass when it comes to sexual assault and other crimes. Duke right? lacrosse team. You f how soon you forget? Yeah, yeah. Duke lacrosse team. Jameis Winston. Brian Banks. You you still think that? In fact, these individuals probably still think that they're guilty of what, even though they had receipts proving that they weren't where they were alleged to have been and committing the assault. Oh, they don't get a pass. In some small, yeah, no. psychotic the little places, places they might. Of Ottawa, hockey team was suspended again, uh, over. The entire fucking team was suspended, right? Their entire season toast because two of their members, and these are this is including members who were not in on the road in the fucking city where these assaults were alleged to have occurred two alleged sexual assaults by members of that team while they were on the road playing in another city right and the entire team suffered the punishment nothing had been proven it had been reported nothing had been proven nothing right absolutely fucking nothing and yeah but but Jocks get a pass. They they get a they totally get a pass. Bullshit. Okay. They fetishize these heroes in a strange way, and it's a big. You mean you too? I know. Are I you know. Hearing? You are probably this of cut of the same cloth as that woman who went to the fraternity and seemed to really, 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 really want to get banged for by some muscular, testosterone saturated, uh you know, macho bo uh, man or whatever the fuck. You, this is your fetish, your fantasy. I'm thinking, I don't know, maybe it isn't. Maybe she just wants the money. Uh, uh, okay. I don't know. Sports. So there's an economic incentive to like, whatever the guy does, we got to clean it up because we need that quarterback. We need those wins. We need those ticket sales. So that's going to be strong incentive to, to allow certain people to act with impunity when they commit crimes. The whole oh, look. They're all black. I know. Look at that. Isn't that interesting? Oh, what, here's a white guy, and and here's a white guy. 
Oh, oh and here's, here's a no, white. That's not a white guy. That's not a white guy. He's probably Hispanic. And there's here's... about three white guys. Oh, this Jesus. Guy... Well, you know, maybe we should bring back lynching. Yeah, I think we should. Just a thought. Just a thought. You know, Amy Zingering. Maybe that will that satisfy you? Let's just 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 have him have the woman accuse the man and just oh, throw this... a fucking loose around the next nearest fucking. <sighs> here's a white guy. Definitely white. Uh, definitely white, and and definitely white, and definitely and white. Ginger. So about and, four. And then, then this guy might be Hispanic, maybe, but only because of his beard. Like he, if he didn't have this beard here, I, I would think he's probably white. But maybe because it's just sort of the style, uh, you know. That, that maybe. Anyway, I don't. I think that this is politically inconvenient. This particular infographic. Yeah, I, I think it's it's a little bit. Um, it's kind of like that 10 hours walking in New York City. And here's where that, 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 what would they gain? She would say, what would a false accusate, accuser gain from accusing an NFL football player of rape? Well, what would the fuck would an NFL football player gain from raping a woman? It's not like she doesn't, he doesn't have a lineup of women who want to throw themselves on his dick. He can't get a woman that's actually attract, actually desires him. Seriously. Yeah. 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 Like, no. And what would what would a woman what would a woman have to gain from accusing a you know promising high uh, promising football player of rape? Oh, I don't know, like millions of fucking dollars in settlements and damages from the yeah. School. And this is just using their logic. It's just using her logic. It's using her logic of what would they gain? Well, what would these NFL football players gain from raping a woman? What would they gain from it? I mean, if we recognize that human beings are not actually, I don't know, ducks, they don't just rape every willing or just attempt to rape every possible whole. They actually have a complex theory of mind that is keyed to feeling desirable. Why wouldn't they go for a woman that desires them? All things equal. Yeah. Like, why wouldn't they do that? Why would they have to go for the one, you know, that is puking on herself so sloppy drunk yeah incidentally most guys don't find women like that attractive yeah maybe wet the bed yeah maybe wet, maybe shitting herself why, why would they go for that woman or a woman who's running away screaming why would they what do they gain when they probably have a line out the fucking door down the hall out the front of the goddamn hotel of women who will get their fucking pom-poms out and say, please give me the dick, please. Why would a man who can get a woman who's got her pom-poms out and is begging him, why would he go for one that's running the fuck away in terror? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why? Unless he's got a screw loose. So what are you saying that black men have uniquely have screw loose? Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna head desk now. I'm just gonna be quiet. I'm gonna be quiet because there's this is this is like this okay. this entire infographic is fucked up on so many levels. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm I'm just gonna move on. I'll say about sports, which I saw with the military is they're very hierarchical, and and players are very influenced by their coach the same way that soldiers are very influenced by their unit commanders. Meaning that if they set an environment and a climate tone that's respectful of women, that actually prosecutes or you know holds people accountable for any kind of misconduct, especially, uh -huh. especially any kind of gender misconduct, you really don't gender see gender misconduct. What? Uh huh. Uh -huh. Gen what the fuck is gender misconduct? Well, well, that's not that's not treating women better than you treat men. That's that's what that is. We know that. You know that. Yeah, yeah. If you tr if you treat women the same as you treat men, that's gender misconduct. Those units. So we are also hoping that the message will spread to coaches so that they will exert more influence on their athletes to sort of do the right thing and have the right values, which we see as really, really possible. I cannot tell you the number of athletes who see my film and come up to me and said, you know, it really changed how I view this because my coach taught me that girls were all jersey chasers. Yeah, a lot of girls are jersey chasers, so there you go. And your coach was warning you not to dick, dip your wick in jersey chasers, wasn't he? That's what he was doing. He was like, don't get distracted by the pussy. That's what he was saying to you. He was saying, women are going to be chasing you. 
it's going to feel really flattering, but keep your fucking eyes on the goal. The goal is the game. Fucking hell. Wow. You know, <laughs> so so when I hear anyone say they were assaulted, I assume, oh, she wanted something or she's after him. And like he said, you know, your film flipped it. Have you seen? Yeah, your film full of freaking bogus examples flipped it for him. Any positive responses from universities to your film? One of the most positive and incredible ones was that recently the president of the University of Alaska, there was a screening on his campus. He saw the film and he then wrote a public apology to Uh. Okay, guys, do not go to the University of Alaska. His reported sexual assault statistics have been so low as to be implausible. How do you know that? Uh, God. We damn. can't detect the problem. Therefore, the problem is even worse than we could possibly imagine. Yeah, yeah. Please, yeah, like, uh, to be honest, if you're a young man thinking of going to uh, post secondary education, don't. But if you do, Online courses, online courses, or and if you if you if it's in your you are living in the same city as the freaking post secondary education, do not live on campus. Do yeah. not date women on campus. Do not talk to them more than necessary, because this is going to get worse. You talk. They talked about having legislation put in 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 California. Not only can you be charged with rape if you cannot prove. That she gave affirmative consent, affirmative enthusiastic consent every step of the way, but it is also illegal to film. Or they're trying to make it so that you cannot make it admissible and it is illegal for you to film. Yeah, so you no. are being asked for a standard of consent, of, of evidence that you will never be able to, no, never yeah. be able to manifest. No, so it's in a yeah. sense. Not only that, but the, the if you ask for her affirmative enthusiastic consent that that actually uh that that could be construed as sexual harassment so in essence what they're doing in california and that'll probably roll over every post-secondary institution in in north america new york state is that is that it is that if you uh, have sex with a woman on campus she can get you evicted at any point and there goes your entire fucking education and it follows you yeah. to your workplace to your next school yeah you're basically dead in the water one one of the things that the foundation for individual rights and in education said that um that 90 percent of the uh lawsuits that are being um launched uh for men who feel that they've been wrongly expelled wrongly disciplined um for sexual misconduct by universities um mostly what those lawsuits are seeking is just to have the uh the essentially the the decision expunged from the student's record the student's educational record so you're looking at just just to get your record cleaned in 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 terms of your education and being able to pursue continue to pursue your education you're looking at thousands and thousands of dollars to launch a lawsuit to get that done right you're not going to get damages you're you're not gonna get the the college to apologize publicly. You're not gonna you're not gonna change anything. You're just gonna get your own record expunged so that you can go on to a different university. Yeah, just just think about that. It is not worth it. Post secondary education is not worth it. Maybe business, maybe the trades, but if you do it, go in as an adult student. Do not talk to any woman more than necessary on college campus. Do not date any woman on college campus. Do not live anywhere near any woman who is on a college campus because this situation can destroy you. You know, and and it's all not it, worth it. All it takes is for that woman who had an awkward sexual encounter with you. The one, the one that I said uh, I was mentioning earlier where she texted him beforehand, do you have a condom before she went to his dorm room to have sex with him? Right, and then texted her friend, "I'm gonna have sex now," right? Um, you know, and then went and had sex, and then she accused him of rape. Um, you know, like it, it's this is this is something that's gonna follow him for the fucking rest of his life, right? And and really think about it. 
is sloppy sex with someone, with an individual who doesn't even give a shit about whether or not you have a good time, is it worth it? Is it really worth your future? Yeah. I mean, think about think about what you're having sex with. She's not going to give a shit if you enjoy yourself. She probably is going to play the, I'm going to see if I can get as much desire out of him for me and give as little desire as I can game with you, which is an extremely dangerous game. I don't know why men play it. I understand that a lot of guys are really compelled. Uh, personally, I think it's just confirmation of your humanity. But it's like, it's not worth it. But, but this is just me talking. I mean, I know there's a lot of pressure. But it doesn't seem worth it to me. No. It, from a, just a cold, analytical look. I would not. I, I'm a woman. I have higher standards. Right? Because I can. Yeah. And I would say that there is no way in on God's green earth that I would go and spend money at a post-secondary institution to get an education and have sex with a guy who does not give a shit whether or not I enjoy myself and can after the fact, get me expelled yeah. for having forced him. I mean, that sounds like, what What part of that deal is of any benefit to me? Yeah. That's like, he'll just lie there. He says, my erection's enough, lady. You do, you go to town. Yeah. And yeah. you better make sure I come. Mm. Otherwise, I might just, uh, I might just be calling up the advice, you know, the, the campus uh, sexual assault. <laughs> Well, what, 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 why? What this what this woman did, right? She had there was an awkward sexual encounter. They talked about it uh, a couple days later, right? They sat down, they talked about it, they admitted that it was, you know, it was like, oh, okay, we both we both kind of regret doing that. It was like a stupid decision, blah blah blah. He thought everything was fine, right? She went to the women's center because it really bothered her. I guess she was a virgin, right? And it really bothered her that she lost her virginity that way. And the campus sexual assault person, one of the counselors who worked at the women's center, convinced her that it wasn't a consensual act, that even though she, her friends, and, and this is the hilarious thing, her friends had separated them. Her friends had said, okay, yeah, no, this is not a good idea. You need, you're drunk, you need to go back to your room, they walked her back to her dorm room, they installed her in her fucking bed, she texted him and said, are you still awake, essentially, like, I really, I really dig you, I want to fucking come, you, do you have a condom, I'm coming, right, and he's like, okay, hurry up, and uh, they were both fucking plastered out of their minds, right, but her friends dragged her away and installed her in her bed, and then she got up out of her bed, walked the, d dug out a condom, walked all the way to his fucking dorm room, went into the dorm room, had sex with him, right, regretted it the next day because she had been a virgin and it was not her dream way of losing her virginity, wasn't the romantic stories, you know, and then she went to the women's center and the, the counselor at the women's center convinced her that she had been raped and convinced her to file a charge. After she had talked with the guy and they'd both agreed that it was a stupid decision and, you know, and whatever, and we can still be friends and it's a little bit awkward, but we can get over it, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, no, she went to the women's center and the woman at the women's center said, no, he raped you and you should file a, file a complaint, right? And that's how that fucking case came to be, right? A woman who had an awkward virginity losing ceremony due to her own actions, right? After her bystander friends, her good Samaritan bystander friends had pulled her away and taken her to safety, she got back out of bed and went and had sex with a guy of her own volition, of her own fucking will, right? And yet that was rape because a someone at the women's center told her it was. So that's what you're up against. It's not just the young woman that you might have sex with. It's not just the young woman who's, who's drunk or tipsy or whatever who you might have sex with. It's if she feels awkward about it and she goes to somebody for, you know, help to, you know, make her feel better about it. 
they're not going to make her feel better about it. They're going to tell her she was fucking raped. And that you're a rapist. So. All right, I think we scared the shit out of people enough. I hope so. In past and present for the university having let them down in some way, and he vowed in his letter to do better on this issue. So the president recently spoke out about this issue. There clearly has been cultural change. It is estimated that one in five women on college campuses has been sexually assaulted during their time there. One yeah, estimated by studies that have a less than 20% response rate. Oh my goodness. That's a little bit bizarre. Less than 20%. Yeah, less than 20%. Every single one, less than 20% response rate. Okay. All right. Well, let's, we're, we're, I think we're at like 20 seconds left, 22 yeah. seconds. Yeah. One in five. I mean, never have we seen a vice president and a president mention this. That's historic and unprecedented. And what I'm glad is that our film came out, it doubled down on this, and hopefully it's starting to right the ship. Why this crime has proliferated for so long with nothing going on is people simply don't believe women. Uh huh. What about men? I don't. Like, why I, did you just erase them completely from this equation? Yeah. Well, you know, I if people don't believe women, why don't people believe women? Because, you know, uh, we keep getting told things like one in five women will be sexually assaulted based on studies that have like less than twenty percent response rates. We keep getting told things that are like completely contrary to our lived experience, like. I don't know, society endorses and normalizes rape. You know, we keep getting told things that are, like, completely contrary to what we see every fucking day. And so, why don't we believe women? Well, maybe if you, if people like you stopped pushing bullshit in the name of championing women. Oh, my God, dog! championing women who say they've been sexually assaulted, maybe we would be more likely to believe the women who do come forward. You know, if you weren't there... Can you, can you just, um, um, unshare, unshare your... your okay. And uh, I'm going to mute you. And uh, you know, just pat your dog on the head and say, good dog. Maybe it'll shut up. All right, I'm going to... She won't... I'm gonna, she oh, won't, sorry. She won't okay. shut up. She won't shut up. No. Okay. Well, I'm sure. I'm sure she's a good dog in some sense. Mm, no, but I I do love her. But she needs to just fucking go somewhere else if she's gonna make noise. Cause. Yeah. Well, I mean, the thing is that uh, I think she just gets excited because she hears the talking. Yeah. So. But. Yeah, she figures she doesn't know who you're talking to, and that sort of bugs her. She's like, "Is there an invisible person in the house? I, I gotta think, find the invisible person." I think that's what it is, and then she gets all worked up, and well, she's still got that cough. She's got asthma, I guess. Mm hmm. So, essentially, Amy Zerling or Zerling, right? Zerling, 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 created a propaganda piece that misrepresented at least three. Three rape cases or alleged sexual assault cases on college campuses. And in response, some college campuses said, hey, don't do that. And then she's saying that because they said, hey, don't do that, don't misrepresent us and our processes, that's evidence that the problem is even bigger than she could have possibly imagined. It's a Kafka trap. It's Kafka trapping. Silence. Sorry, no. We nothing more to... It is. It's it's Kafka trapping. It's like that that the whole thing. It, you know, like it, it really is. It's like you remember the "Don't be that guy" poster campaign. You remember that? Of course, I do. Um, and and it was launched in Edmonton first, and then it moved to Vancouver, right? And I think it was Vancouver saw a decrease in the number of reports, and Edmonton saw an increase in the number of reports of rape. And so Vancouver was like, the poster campaign is successful because rape went down. And the Edmonton police were like, the poster campaign was successful because 
women were more willing to report their rapes. So no matter what happens, the poster campaign was successful. Yeah. It's sort of like everything good that happens is, is as feminism and everything bad that happens is patriarchy. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I, I I sense a great deal of intellectual disingenuousness from the people that we argue against, Karen. Well, I'm, I'm starting to feel, I'm starting to feel, like like they're not being honest. Well, I don't know. I don't know whether they're just like they're lying to us or whether they're lying to themselves. Like I said, if if this woman, uh, Amy Ziering, really believes that one in five women will be sexually assaulted when she, you know, in college, then, then what she's doing, I can, I can imagine that she thinks she's doing a wonderful thing. Right. But that, that doesn't mean that she is doing a wonderful thing. And I mean, she could be lying. Um, she could be lying to herself. Right. She doesn't necessarily have to be lying to other people. So, uh, it's, it's, it's just very, very frustrating. Very All right. But it is very frustrating. I'm I'm gonna go because I have I have a I have a, a Skype call with Lauren Southern scheduled in half an hour, and then I have a whole bunch of other stuff to do, and uh, and then I have shall to I, for that speaking in, engagement. So you should you shall shill. Okay. All right. I'll do. Alrighty. Imagine a man with a hundred buns giving one to help feed someone who's fallen on hard times. Now imagine a man with one bun giving up half to feed someone who needs it. The second man has given more, has invested more, he's offered more of himself, he's more committed than the first man. If you are financially comfortable and you're listening to this, you are a vital part of Honey Badger Radio as our patron, and we appreciate your support more than words can say. You are why we're able to do this. Your generosity continues to astound us and gives us all a great deal of heart when the threats fly thick and fast. But for those of you who aren't financially comfortable, I want you to consider the advantage because that 50 cents or $1 a month represents a tremendous commitment for you, a tremendous commitment to the message that men matter. That commitment will make the message resonate more inside you now than at any other time. Now I'm going to put my money where my mouth is. I said in a previous radio show that this January is when I'm finally out of the hole funding Honey Badger Radio has personally put me in, but that introduces a new problem for me. I'm not going to ask anyone to do something I'm not willing to do myself or haven't done myself, so how do I continue, continue to commit financially to Honey Badger Radio in the way that I'm asking you, our patrons, to? I could set aside a portion of my earnings and then put them back into Honey Badger Radio general revenue, but that doesn't really make any sense. So here's what I'm going to do instead. If you're someone who is struggling financially and $5 means all the difference in the world, send me an email at topic at badgerpod.com. That money will come out of my personal earnings. And you can keep it, donate it to Honey Badger Radio or to a men's issue charity of your choice. Uh, what, I'm, what I'm offering is to give you $5 if you are in that position of financial hardship. If you keep it, I'll be happy knowing it helped you out. I'd love it if you spent it on something that gives you a smile. If you don't, if you choose to invest it in the message, I hope that it gives you more than just a smile, but the excitement and pride of having invested yourself even more in the message that men matter. So, once again, send a message to topic at badgerpod.com and I'll give you $5 for my own personal earnings. This, this is the money that I get each month to pay for my rent or for all of the various shit that I need to live. And if you use it on yourself, that's fine. Just just buy something that makes you smile. Um, there may be like a fan testing question so that I know that you actually watch the show. I don't want to get like 3,000 people from 4chan asking for five bucks and I may have to cap it at some amount because I don't know how many people will take me up on it. But if you do, I, I want you to know that I, I want you to have something. Do put put it into something that'll make you smile. Put it into another men's rights cause. Do something with it. But anyway, thank you. You can end the show now, Karen. Oh, is it? No, no, no. You have to end it. It's your show. No, it's it's no, it's our show. No, it's not mine. It's not your show. Yeah, no, you got it. You got it. It's on Honey Badger. Oh, oh, you're right. It's oh, you mean it's literally my show. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, you got to end it. <laughs>